Forget about three yards in a cloud of dust. Today it's three yards in a spray of mud. It's been raining all afternoon in South Louisiana, making for the perfect conditions for a major 5A gridiron brawl. Tonight, number nine, West Monroe, takes the long bus trip to Gonzales to battle East Ascension. It's the Rebels and the Spartans exclusively on the Rev Game of the Week. We just moved, so there's millions of people. Dahlia's in bloom, over nine acres. When we started, we grew a quarter of an acre. Now I'm taking on new products on the regular. We always dreamed of having this property, so. I want to make my yard look as beautiful as largemouth bass. Yep. We've got tons of them, don't we, buddy? There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Come see us at Ascension Equipment for John Deere sales and service. Save more today and mow tomorrow. Lamar Dixon's role from an entertainment standpoint is to be an economic engine for South Louisiana and Ascension Parish. To create an environment that people don't have to really leave their home in South Louisiana to have a world-class entertainment value. The partnership between Lamar and Rev has been a seamless marriage that I don't know how we lived without. And really knew what they were talking about. and took the time to learn what we did instead of just sell us a product. I knew that that was going to be our, our company for life. I highly recommend Rev Business. Pico Builder Supply, your one-stop lumberyard, provides an extensive selection of quality building supplies for your new construction and remodeling. We offer computer-aided estimating of your building and remodeling plans, as well as blueprint copies. From humble beginnings to becoming the industry leader in Gonzales and beyond, Pico proudly supports our local community because we believe in giving back to those who have had a hand in our success. Let the experts at Pico Builder Supply help you with your new project today. This baby will get your heart racing, as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. Internet speed so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. This, this is a walk-on athlete. They push harder and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Walk-ons, we live for this. Welcome to East Ascension Spartan Stadium here in Gonzales, Louisiana. My name is Jimmy Frederick, along with me, the coach and soon to be Hall of Famer. All right. David Swacker is with us. And guys, we've got a great football game on tap for us tonight. It is the West Monroe Rebels and the East Ascension Spartans. And coach, last week we saw a, a, a good football game, a tough football game for East Ascension, losing to Zachary 24 to seven, but nonetheless, it was uh, it was some good things. They had some good things that they worked through. Well, you know, the, probably the worst thing for every football coach right here is what what have they been able to do during all this heat situations that you have throughout the state, and it's a serious situation. Uh, there's no joking or kidding about it, and uh, so you know, most of your practices probably have either been like Zachary in the morning, right, or Maybe East Ascension comes out here or a lot of turf fields, and they practice uh, later at night. But it gets you out of all kinds of routines. And the, and the crazy thing is, like I was talking to a friend of mine, all of a sudden you go out, you're right on the borderline, but you're in good shape. And then all of a sudden it gets a little hotter. You know what you got to do? Got to come back inside. 
Coach, let's take a look at the keys to the game tonight. It's going to be a, a, a well-played football game on both sides for sure, but West Monroe, they had a long trip today. Yes, and I'm going to tell you, West Monroe in its history, a lot of these players probably might not even been born yet. Uh, they have done some tremendous things as far as travel, uh, and most of the time they were traveling, Jimmy, to the Dome. That's right. You know, but that was spending the night and everything. So they are just like, I, I call it a travel baseball team or a summer baseball team or maybe a high school team. A lot of traveling involved where you do get to spend the night, and it's a long trip down there. You know, you, you in a second maybe you'll get a view of uh, that team they have over there. That's probably about five charter buses, you know, coming this way. And so how you handle yourself, you know, uh, on that road trip, because there's a lot of organization that takes place uh, and your whole coaching staff. And, you know, we might get into it a little bit, some of the issues that West Monroe may have. Um, what are your goals going to be? Number one, if you uh, any one of these teams, you want to get better. And number two, hopefully as you're getting better, you're winning the game. And then uh, execution, boy, you, you got to be uh, start getting a little bit more consistent. Um, I think uh, West Monroe probably had it. You know, they got they won a game last week. Maybe not as good as, you know, the coach uh, says that we could have done a lot better, but they did win the game. Let's put this thing behind us and let's move on. If you're Darnell Lee, you didn't win the game last week. And uh, so you're going to have to win the line of scrimmage. And I'm going to tell you what, Jimmy, it's going to be man. No, take that back. Men on men. No doubt. And it's going to be impressive to watch the line of scrimmage to see just exactly what goes on in the battles with offensive linemen versus defensive linemen on both sides. And you got to get to the ball. You cannot give up the big plays. And, you know, you want to keep uh, your offense on the field. And when, when you can do that and you start wearing the other team down, especially defensively, a lot of plus things can happen for you. Without question, we're getting ready to see. You'll notice that the uh, students are in uh, nightgowns and things of that nature. We figured out that they have a theme every game. La I'm not sure what last week was, but this week I did find out it is senior citizen. So that's the reason you'll see the student section in elderly regalia, if you will. Um, I'm a little concerned about that <laughs> because I think I'm in the wrong spot. I, I should leave the booth and go over there You should with be the with them. You should be the mascot and, of the uh, – uh, but I don't think they have any, like, 38-inch length pajamas over there no. for me. Uh, ah, dog. It, I'm going to tell you, my wife says, this place is unbelievable. The kids are unbelievable. Uh, they do a lot of great things. And, and most of all, while they're getting the education, they're having a lot of fun. And uh, right along with that are your teachers. Absolutely. Of course, let's take a look quickly. at There's, there's Darnell Lee at the bottom of your screen there. But we'll take very quickly a look at the coaches' records while we're waiting for the uh, East Ascension Spartans to come out. Did have some uh, interesting situations in West Monroe. It is not Todd Garvin as we expected. They have an interim head coach in Kevin Davis. And there's Darnell Lee's record. He is 65-47. and 47. The Spartans are on the field. The band is playing under the direction of Charles Lee and assistant director David Gambino. And, Coach, this is the pageantry of high school football. This is what makes it fun. The stands are packed. We even got a pretty good contingent of West Monroe fans. We know they're watching and listening uh, back at home in West Monroe. But this is a perfect night for football. That little rain shower, I said it wasn't little, but the shower we had earlier has really cooled things off nicely. And, you know, when, when, you, when I just noticed this because uh, my godchild just went to Tennessee and how they come out is they form a T and they come out through the base of the T right there and it looks like he's essentially kind of did the same thing. We're going to have pre presentation of the colors and the presentation of the colors by the Navy ROTC. The national flag is Cadet Mia Roussel. Our state flag is being carried by Cadet Yitzhak Escalante. Our right rifleman is Cadet Joseph Stutzman. And left rifleman, Cadet Miles Bates. And we'll have the national anthem will be sung today by senior choir member Cale 
Merricks. And tonight's national anthem will be performed by Kale Merricks, a Yale leader and senior member of the East Ascension Choir. Tremendous job for Kale Merricks. We appreciate the effort. The band, phenomenal job as well. Our color guard by the Navy Junior ROTC. And we are moments away from playing some football. You know, Jimmy, this is exactly how football, high school football ought to be in every stadium. I don't care if you're Class A or you're 5A. Get those people, the unrecognized heroes that, that, that get out there and sing the national anthem. That would be the hardest thing in the world for me. Not me, brother. You, you, well, I mean, not, oh, it would be hard. It'd be very hard for me too. Is what I'm saying. I wouldn't do it. That's we what can't I meant. get you out That's there what next I meant. week. No, 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 no. I, I, that was mis, I misspoken there. Sorry. You know, I, I thought it might be hard for the officials, but you know, they, nobody's really watching them. You know, but uh, everybody in that stadium is yeah, watching that kid. Uh, as far as the national anthem, you see West Monroe last year, eight three, losing in the first round of the playoffs. And, and who, who does everybody lose to? Zachary, 20 to 10. And East Ascension, 6-6 uh, six six last year. And lost to, uh, in the regional round, first round of the play, uh, second round of the playoffs, to uh, Neville. And Sterlington beat, I mean, uh, West Monroe beat Sterlington last week, 14 to 3. And Zachary here at home against East Ascension, won 24 to 7. Our couple captains for tonight for East Ascension. We have number five, Taj Washington, number seven, Lamar Bolden, and number eight, Jackson Chesson. Number 11, Grant Edmondson. We see our white hat, our referee, Al Weathersby. He will be flipping the coin. Are they just going over? Here's a head, here's a tail. You know, your visitors, you get to call heads or tails. You know, we'll let it drop, and then you'll have uh, one of a, about three choices, whether you want a ball, want the ball, you want a, a side, or you want a kick. East Ascension won the toss. East Ascension won the toss. They, they will defer, time. and so we will take a look at the starters offensively for the West Monroe Rebels. Let's take a look at the starters for West Monroe as they shake hands and get ready to play football. Start things off like this. Hayden Federico, a baseball player. He's committed to Ole Miss. He'll be playing quarterback and running back Caden Willis. Zach Fomar is the wide receiver along with Grant Edmondson and number four, Trez Davis. The tight end, Jay Cash. And then they've got some big guys up front. They average about 260 across the front. Left tackle is number 76, Nate Green. The left guard is Matthew Hickson. The center, Jovi Johnson. Tylen George is the right guard. And the right tackle is Cooper Simmons. Quickly, let's take a look at our defense for the East Ascension Spartans as they get ready to kick it off. 
here you go. Defensively for the Spartans, we have Joseph Hobby, our defensive end. Our two tackles are Nathan Allen and Aiden Joseph. The other defensive end, Camden Womack. Zachary Jupiter is the middle linebacker, the weak linebacker, Shaquan Issam. Cornerbacks, Thompson Harkless and Harkless. And you've got our safeties, Deron McZeal. He was back last week. Lamar Bolden and Tanner Stanga. And we are ready to kick this one away. So glad you've joined us on the Rev Game of the Week. I'm Jimmy Frederick along with Coach David Swacker. It's the Spartans and the Rebels. Week two of high school football here in East Ascension. The kick is away. Collected at the nine-yard line. And he will be swarmed under at the 20. And that is where the Spart excuse me, the Rebels will take over first and ten. And it was number eleven. Uh, receiving the kick, that was Grant Edmondson. Well, it looked like number 40 on that. Just West Monroe did a good job of setting up a four or five man wedge right there, Jimmy. And uh, number 40 for uh, the Spartans uh, did a great job here. Gavin Clayton, as far as breaking that up and able to stop uh, from any, any further advancement by West Monroe. One big change, I think, for East Ascension is you see number 99, Aiden Joseph. He is a big man. He was playing offensive line last week. He's playing defensive line this week. You know, they don't really – the Rebels haven't got their offensive identity yet. As you see the quick pitch to Caden Willis. Willis has got a little bit of running room and lumber his way for eight. He gets to the – about nine. He gets to the 30-yard line. They spotted the ball actually earlier at the 21. Stop by number 24. This is what's going to be interesting for me, uh, Jimmy, is how deep does that tailback line up? Old Don Child's days, it was nine yards deep, and you had a man at fullback, and you had a decision maker at quarterback, and uh, you had some outstanding offensive linemen. And it, here it is, about nine, eight or nine yards deep. Second down and one. Ball at the 30-yard line. Federico didn't play much this summer. He's been playing baseball all summer. A quick screen pass goes over the head of his intended receiver, David Moore, the yeah, senior, David and Moore. it brings up third and short. And you kind of look at that, and it, you'll see that at every level. And uh, basically what he's trying to do is get the ball out there quick to the wide side of the field. You could see they were already lined up uh, you know, close to the numbers. And then your widest receiver has got to block the most dangerous man. And if he was able to make that block, you try to get down that sideline and you make it sound like it's a running play. Grant Edmond almost off your screen. Now he is off the screen as we tighten in. A quick pitch to number five, Willis. Willis turns the corner, ducks his head. Will he squirt through for a first down? I think they will give it to him, but not by much. Looked like he had a little more room, but he just kind of stumbled a bit. Well, you know, that and defensively, they're going to be very good athletes and they're going to get there in a hurry. So they'll move the chains. And look, you say, man, they just ran that into the sideline. That's a sweep. But basically, it's like an, an off tight end play where we're trying to get down and cut inside and making a big play out of this. Possibly an equipment infraction? I'm not sure. They stopped the play very quickly, and I think he's got something wrong. Number seven, that's Edmonds. No, check that, that uh, David Moore. Got something wrong with his helmet. Yeah. So number four, Trez Davis, the sophomore, will check into the slot. So it brings up first and ten, the ball at the 31-yard line of the Rebels. Jimmy, I see nothing but pure man-to-man -man right here. He'll pull it out, read the end. He's got a little running room. Federico goes nowhere, and the defense swarms him. And, Jimmy, it looks like a, an LSU play. Where they have LSU has their quarterback coming out here. Watch this. And he's coming out here. Look like he, he wants to throw it, but there's a receiver does not go downfield, which could open it up for a big play. Camden Womack on the stop as well, the defensive end. He was right there, and he did not crash. He stayed home, and that's what you have to do on, on those RPOs. All right, now this ought to be interesting. Wide receiver to the wide side of the field. Man-to-man. -man. Let's see if we get that uh, throw out there. Moore goes in motion. It's going to be number three taking it himself. And that is Federico. Federico and Federico's just running about. And that is number seven for the uh, Spartans. 
on uh, that tackle right here outside Lamar Bolden. Federico takes it, and there's just nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. This defense has stiffened up. They've played. This has been a much cleaner game all the way around than we had last week when we started off with a lot of penalties. Well, right there, if you saw Bolden, he did not go outside. He came straight downhill and got to that quarterback before he could turn up seal. Uh, third and nine, third and ten situation. This will be Willis. Willis tries to break the tackle. He does not have a lot of breakaway speed, but you will see him punishing defensive backs. He picks up three, and they're going to have to punt it. And, and watch Thompson right here. Watch him come downhill on the tackle. And look, hey, wraps up. Head keeps his head up. Does an outstanding job right there. Stopping West Monroe on that third and long situation where you have a fourth and four in punting situation. Daniel Lane will do the punting duties. He'll kick it from his own 24-yard line. Number four is set to receive. I don't like that. You know, the ball bounces uh, like you want it, but it'd be nice you get up there and catch that. But, you know, last week and this week, that, that deep man for East Ascension was 40, and it's Zachary, too, at times. You know, 40 yards deep. You know, maybe the, uh, the punter has a leg, but he, he kind of rushed that one. So we'll, we'll wait and see next situation what happens. Well, they definitely had some punting issues. Like said, oh, special teams all the way around was, was sloppy for, for both teams last week. Can't practice at the gym. No, you cannot. Kick, kickoff's kind of hard to practice yes, in the gym also. All right, we've got our first opportunity to see the East Ascension Spartans on offense. They have the ball at their own 37-yard line. Hand off to J Taj. Taj takes us close to the 40, picks up three. And, you know, to me, it looks like, Jimmy, like this is just a straight run play. And uh, your quarterback right there, I don't think he's reading anyone. It looks like they're in a cover three in the secondary. Four-man front. Rolling out. It's knocked into the air and almost picked off by the linebacker. Browning, Browning pass is broken up. Watch the play by Browning. I see what he saw, and he sprint out right here. Good protection, and West Monroe does an outstanding job, but East Ascension had a receiver right there in that mid-slot range, but a good job there by West Monroe knocking the ball down. Colin Watkins is the guy that knocked it down with a big paw. You know, I thought I thought Browning did a great job throwing the ball short to his receivers like Ja'Cory Mitchell and uh, and Chesson last week. Third and seven, dropping back, finds his man in the middle, all the way across midfield, picks up ten yards, and they will be into a Rebel territory. Number sixteen, Justin. Hey, watch the setup, plants the back foot and zeroes it in there. Good job of reading it right there. You had a receiver in the flat, and it's the old, the greatest pass route in the world, Jimmy. Curl flat. Here we go real it's, quick. Hudson Browning's our, our starting quarterback. Taj walking to the tailback. We'll come back and get these right after this play. Hand off to Taj. Taj dances his way. He's met as he picks up three yards. Big play in the uh, middle there the as yard. Stewart and Williams tackle. Three. So our fullback is Caleb Davis, Ja'Cory Mitchell, Jackson Chesson, Lathan Dumas are wide receivers across the line. They're big. Colin Netter is your right tackle. Your right guard is Kendrell Green. The center is Derez Queen. Kelvin Gray is your left guard, and your left tackle is Bryston Martinez, and he just got an offer from LSU. He is going to be something special, only a sophomore. Brings up second down and six. Handoff this time to number 21. That's Wilson. And Wilson had 14 carries last week. He had the most carries, and he picks up two. It brings up third down. Well, if we watch a replay right here, it looks like East Ascension, the difference this week is watch the push of the offensive line. It's right on that line right there, and it's pushing everybody back a little bit. Martinez needs to get a little bit more involved. And able to get two – Two, three yards and three yards. Now it is uh, third and four, five or six. 
we got a timeout. Why don't we keep it here and go through our defensive starters while we have a second. Six minutes. This is a hydration timeout, by the way, so they stop every six minutes in the quarter. So our starting defensive lineup for the West Monroe Rebels. Our defensive tackles are Hayden Stewart and Nick Williams. Defensive ends are Tyler Roark, who is a very good football player, and Brody Thurman. Your linebackers, Cole Stevens, J.Q. Turner. Cornerbacks are number four, Chris Dade, Jatavian James, number 27, and your safeties. Your weak safety is Zach Fulmer. Caden Cunningham is your strong safety, and the free safety is Sam Reagan. They start out in a they base out of a four two five defense coach as you saw there, but they are very multiple. They will they will change things up. They'll get into a three four. They'll move to all kinds of different coverages if needed. But what coach told me is that they've got to be able to stop this tough running game of East Ascension. There you see Darnell Lee right there. And uh, your your coach is in the press box. Offensive coordinator Tyler Gaspard and uh, defensive coordinator for the Spartans is uh, Scott Pellegrin. All right, well, this is a big play. Third and five, and they're inside Rebel territory. Ball resting at the 46. Makes it the 44. Nice quick pass into the flats. They get pick up the first down and a little bit more. It was Lathan Dumas on the catch. A nice throw by Browning. Now, Browning is only a sophomore, and again, you know, he's done a very good job. All right, th this is what I see of Browning, that last week his best success was a little flat route, okay? Probably completed four, five, six of them. The hardest part about throwing that ball right there from that situation, and let's watch this play. That was Williams again, and Williams just a hard runner. He stands up a little bit hard, but he hits, it, hits that hole quickly. And, and w when Browning has to throw the ball, I watched it. Anytime you have to throw it quick from the shotgun, you can't adjust that ball to the grip. You have to throw it, and it's most of the time you're going to be, fingers will be off the grip. Did an outstanding job of getting that ball outside there to the receiver, picking up that first down. Brings up second down and six. The ball at the 31 yard line, and they are marching all the East Ascension Spartans. 4.53 to go here in the first. A big hard run by Taj Washington. Taj brings the pile with him. Crosses the 25 to the 21-yard line. Another big first down. And it's nothing better, Jimmy, than offensive linemen being happy. You know, happy. Look at the blocking downfield. I'm talking about not just a little bit of push. I'm talking about a five-yard push. And that, that running back getting behind that pile and making things happen for first down. Big blocks by Kendrell Green on the right side. Smart play, smart call right there, Coach. Everything's going, everything's going good. Let's just uh, not run a play here. Or maybe we went on two, I don't know. Well, it's the first penalty of the game. By this time last week, we had had about seven. Five-yard penalty for against West Monroe, and that moves them five yards closer, brings up first and five. The ball now inside the 20, inside the red zone at the 17-yard line. Taj Washington, he's got to be a big key, big man tonight. They're trying to anticipate, and the ball's out. Fumble, and it looks like the Rebels have fallen on it. Oh, a huge mistake that time as number 37 falls on the football for, East, for West Monroe. Brody Thurman. Let's see what happens right here. Just uh, Browning just drops the ball right there, just mishandled a little bit, and... I think as time goes on, and hopefully it's pretty quick, you'll find out don't try to force that ball in there, Jimmy. When you, when you, you are bobbling the ball, just follow that running back in that hole and see what you can get. And the main thing you're going to get, you're going to have the ball back. Well, they, they had two fumbles last week. They didn't lose either one of them. This one hurts because they were driving the ball so well, and they've mixed up their offensive plays. I think they had a nice mixture of runs to pass. Again, they're mostly run, but that's what their identity is. So let's see if they can overcome this mistake. Pulls it back, dropping back, looking for somebody to throw, and he's going deep. He's got a man open, and it's right in the bread basket. Caught by Grant Edmondson. A huge play of 42 yards. And that's big zeal right there making Well, it didn't make the tackle. I think the 40-yard line made the tackle. 
But boy, watch this. Nobody on him. Federico puts it right in the bread basket and it, it he just stumbled. I mean, the turf monster got him because he had it wide open to the end zone. First and 10 from the 35 into Spartan territory. So low snap picked up by Willis and Willis is going to be met at the line of scrimmage. He loses, uh, excuse me, gosh, loses a yard. Willis. Joseph oh, Hobby yeah. right there on oh, the solo Willis. tackle. Tackle, number 43. Oh, now, you know, and, and I'm not real, real certain, you know, what West Monroe's philosophy is here. Basically, in the first time they got the ball, a lot of under center, two backs, high backfield, and a little bit of a change here. And this is what you see East Ascension doing a lot of times with uh, three wide receivers and uh, a blocking back. This time he'll read it nicely and pulls it back from his receiver, and Federico will take it up the middle. You know, the offensive coordinator is now the interim head coach. So Kevin Davis is now calling plays and is also the interim head coach here. And boy, his background, he's had some success. Yes, he has. Texas all over the place. And when I say success, Don Childs would call that my kind of success. <laughs> it's called state championships. That's right. And, you know, we didn't mention it, but West Monroe has eight state championships to their name and two national championships. I don't know how you get crowned national champions, but they did it in 98 and 2000. Third down for the Rebels. Rolling to his right, throws a bullet, and it's into the hands of his receiver. It goes through the hands of a couple of defenders, and that's Caden Cunningham with a touchdown. What a throw. But wait, there's a flag down at the 40-yard line. Roughing the passer is the call against the Spartans. It will be declined. Touchdown is good. Let's see what happened. Basically, it's called a smash route. You got a hitch on the outside, and you got a corner route behind it. Nice throw down there. Just over. You know, as a secondary guy, you want to get deep as the deepest guy. And he just kind of drifted a little bit behind a nice effort by East Ascension. Very good pass and catch right there for the Rebels to go ahead by it was, a score. It was actually David Moore, not Cunningham, going up to get the catch and the touchdown. A 23-yard touchdown pass. They mess up the extra point, and it will be stopped. The PAT is no good. We will... With two minutes to go in the first quarter, the Rebels lead 6-0. to zero. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the rest of the first quarter. Back right after this on the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-ons, we live for this. Glaze, heating and air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Well, you got a short because of the penalty, lining up on the... 45-yard line, anything could happen right here. Just depends on how confident you feel as a coach. Hunter Fox will line drive it. It will bounce over the head of the of the uh, receiver, and it will go into the end zone for a touchback. Once that ball uh, gets parallel to that goal line, it is a touchback. Well, let's take a look at the non-district games for this week, week two. We've got Denham Springs beat Glen Oaks 44-0. That was yesterday. Dunham beat Live Oak 24-14 also yesterday. Our Rev Sports 2 game is Ponchatoula at Dutchtown. West Monroe, of course, is here at East Ascension. Booker T. Washington is at Santa Maw, and Walker is at Fountain Blue. So some good games, non-district contests um, across 5-5A, and um, already... Had a couple of good ones yesterday. All right, East Ascension has the football once again. They have got to uh, bounce back after that good drive and fumble, but let's see how they regroup here on their second possession. Referee is talking things over with Coach Lee. 
on the sidelines. Not sure what the question is. But I think we're just about set to go. This officiating crew out of the Baton Rouge Association. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Really glad that you have joined us for the Rev Game of the Week. It's the Spartans and the Rebels. West Monroe making the trip all the way down to East Ascension. Counter to Williams. Wilson, excuse me, Wilson. And Wilson picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Well, wa watch how well organized this is. You got a crisscross play right there. And all you're trying to do is maybe get somebody to take a step where your lineman can kind of take control of them, or you can get to the next level on the linebackers or outside linebackers. Ja'Cory Mitchell's lined up in the slot to the bottom of your screen, rolling out just a quick pass from the backfield, and it goes nowhere as Browning's pass it complete to Wilson, but Wilson's wrapped up right there. Well, good job on the sprint out right here. My personal thoughts is right here, first of all, I, I, I don't like the reverse out because your quarterback's back goes to the secondary. You can't see what's going on. So I think one of the things East Ascension needs to do, one, two, three, let's throw that ball deep. Well, that's what well, they were doing, it, that one, two, three drop, even even that quicker drop in the, in the flat. 46 was the guy that made the tackle real quick. Colin Watkins dropping back, just has to dump it off to his check receiver, and he is swarmed right there. I mean, just toasted. Well, good job there by West Monroe on the coverage. The you see Browning right here complete. looking over. It had to get rid of it early. Probably three. wouldn't have enough time to get that ball downfield somewhere. Elijah Thomason, number 48, right there to make the stop. Othamont is on to kick. He did not punt last week because he had COVID. So he's back in, in action. Oh, this is a big part of the game tonight for both teams. Kicking game. Whistle blows. Blows the play dead. And we had a lot. Of, I'll say we. East Ascension had a, a difficult time punting the ball, especially early going last week. Flag at the 18-17 yard line on the near side of the field. Weathersby, our official, will make the call. It's illegal procedure against the Spartans. That'll back them up a little bit more. Moore will uh, plant his heels at, a, at the 40-yard line of East Ascension. And Arthamont will have to be kicking from just about three-quarters of the way into his end zone. Twelve seconds to go here in the first quarter. And uh, Tanner Stanga is your deep snapper, also playing in the secondary. Good snap. Not a good punt. It's a short punt. It will hit at the 25-yard line and roll to the 30. And that is where we saw Zachary take over a couple of times last week, and that's where the Rebels will take over. And that does it for the first quarter. We're going to take a break. The Rebels in great field position after a punt, and they lead 6-0 to zero here on the Rev Game of the Week. This baby will get your heart racing as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at letsrev.com. Let's Rev. Internet speeds so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at letsrev.com. Let's Rev. Each team had two possessions in the first quarter. West Monroe punted on their first possession. East, East Ascension drove down to the 16-yard line before fumbling the football away. That was the first possession. Then the big pass plays by West Monroe to get into the end zone to make it 6-0. to zero. The PAT was no good. And, of course, three and out for East Ascension. Both teams have had one penalty each of five. Well, actually, East Ascension has had two penalties. West Monroe won. 
And the Rebels have it in Spartan territory on the 30-yard line. All right, let's just see what happens right here because they recover a fumble in the first quarter, and the first play is what? Vertical route. Yep. They got a nice short field right here. Let's just see if they go back to the vertical route because this is their third series, and for some reason they're going to say, I don't know if we physically – can run that eye backfield against this defensive front right here, and along with those linebackers there. Well, you can see the arm strength of the baseball player that is Hayden Federico. Again, he's uh, committed to play baseball at Ole Miss and did not really zero football work all summer long because he was traveling. He played on Team USA. He played on several other uh, travel teams, so he really didn't work out with the team. He, can't, he got back here in fall camp just before school started and let's see what the situation is. This is Al Weathersby. He's looking at the scoreboard for some reason. It looks to me like, or maybe the play clock. Uh, they're trying to fix the play clock. There it is. It was on 25, and now I, it's I at 40. You, I, that, that, that's good communication. I can remember being on the sidelines, the referee's trying to do all kinds of gyre. Well, what do you want it on, ref? Right. 645. <laughs> Put it on 645, please. It'll be an RPO. It'll take it back himself, and it'll be Federico, and Federico picks up three yards. He'll get to the 27. I, I tell you what, I, I like Federico what I see keeper. from Federico. Going to play college baseball, evidently he's pretty good at that because they've been very good as a team. And he'll run the ball. He'll throw the ball. He looks like he's a ringleader for this team right here. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just a firm believer. All the situation, he's going to have to make a decision on every play out here, Jimmy, right? whether it be in a run game or the pass game. And I just believe this is going to help his baseball game because he's not going to be involved in every play in baseball. That's right. Well, you know, it, we can talk about it, but this the fact that coaches really like, oh, that snap, picks it up, though. Federico looking downfield. Now he's being chased out of the pocket. He'll just there throw it go. away. He just throws it away. Good decision that time. He was running for his life. He was being chased well, you by know a lot of. It was Matthew so Allen. It looked like seven. that was uh, really giving him a chase. Well, number and, fifty. And you, you get out of the pocket, and when you're out of the tackle box, you can throw it wherever you want to. You know, out of bounds. It's no intentional grounding or whatever. As long as you throw it past the down box, and that was not a problem. So, smart play right there by your quarterback. And every quarterback, as much spread stuff is going on, Jimmy, every quarterback in the world ought to be able to do that. Nathan Allen, I misspoke. It wasn't Matthew. It was Nathan Allen. Snap still a little low, but he's able to control it. Nice pass to number 11. That's Gret Edmondson. Edmondson comes back to the ball, and he gets close to a first down. In fact, I think he's got it by about two yards. Watch the, watch the setup on this right here. Just so well timed out. That throw right there, nice kick out block. Should have done it maybe a little bit better, uh, seven. And uh, able to, be, you know, pick up uh, 10 yards on the play for a first down. Gets him on the stop. A few substitutions in here. Issam had 14 tackles last week. That's a lot of tackles for your outside linebacker. First and 10, rolling to his left, throws toward the end zone, a little bit overthrown, intended for number 11, Edmondson again. It's just a little comeback out route right there, and I'm going to tell you, he had it nicely set up, but got a lot of heat from the outside there and was hit right as he threw. Second and 10 now, the ball inside the 20-yard line at the 18. Federico's a strong kid, too. He throwing across his body is not an easy thing to do. Well, especially the old sprint out to the left. You know, if you don't get that question mark look where you can square those right. shoulders up, it's, it's tough. Coming in motion is Moore, and there's a whistle on the play. I'd like to see him hand that ball off to uh, number seven. That's Moore, yeah. It just looks like. 
That guy has two solid receivers out there to block for him. You're going to get outside all the way. I believe he, uh, West Monroe called the timeout that time. I think. I'm trying to. A lot of games going on, of course. Uh, we've got a lot of action happening around the state tonight. East Ascension Spartans will take a quick look at the last five seasons. Last year, the regionals, so they're going to the regionals four times in a row, the quarterfinals in 2018. We got to call the by district. No, we got to call the, the regional round last yes. year, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. I tell you what, at the playoffs at football, when it gets a little cooler, that's what it's. You, you cannot beat it. I agree. What, what about Penn State? Not, not Penn State, Nebraska in volleyball the other night with 90 something thousand in the football. Oh, arena. I saw that. Most ever for a woman's sporting event ever. Wow. All right, brings up second and 10. This time he'll pull it back and decides he wants to throw it, but there's nobody to throw to. Good coverage downfield. He slips down on this wet turf. And that was a covered sack. There was nobody to throw to. Outstanding job by East Ascension right there on the outside. And let's just watch the route that they take. Sack was given to number 94. Hey, you got an out. You know, no, nowhere for the – I'm not real certain where the quarterback was supposed to throw that one. Or maybe his scramble went to the left and that took him out of the throwing angles. Well, you know, it did, again, it did rain here pretty significantly. The, the turf is definitely wet, and it just, his feet just came out from under him. He lost 10 yards on that one. It brings up third and 20. This time we'll hand off to number five, Willis, and Willis is swarmed. He has gone nowhere, and that was one of our keys. And there's the big defensive tackle, Aiden Joseph, number 99, in on the stop along with others. The stuff on the carry was and if you watch, it's the by. second time we've seen Jabari this play. Jupiter. If you watch East Ascension, there is pursuit, which it should be. It's well, the, the, the offensive play is well organized. But also coming back, nobody John can get Brown. to those linebackers, and they're all over the running back. The Rebels are going to go for it on fourth and 20. I don't know what fourth and 20 play you got, but they're going to see if they can pull one out of the sack. Dropping back, looking for somebody to throw to, uses all his strength, right into the breadbasket, touchdown! Oh my goodness, a 30-yard touchdown strike to Trez Davis on a skinny post right in the center of the field. But four verticals right there, Jimmy. You have all four, you got the, the, the numbers covered, and here your third inside is running a skinny post, and look, he's right on that hash mark. This guy, number seven, is right on the hash mark. And a great job. You had two safeties deep, and he just split them. And a good uh, job protection by the offensive line and also by the quarterback. Nice throw. PAT is good. We're going to take a break. Don't go anywhere, folks. We've got more. The first half, at, excuse me, 8.36 to go in the first half. It is 12, excuse me, 13 to 0. We'll be back right after this on the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, We Live for This, Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Eight-play drive, 30-yard touchdown pass after the sack dropped, dropped them back, and the PAT was good. 13-0, 8.36 to go in the first half. Kick is away. It's a high-sky kick. It will be collected at the 15-yard line. Got a little running room to the 30. He's down at the 31. Well, nice job, number one, of catching 
the kickoff. And look, everybody except a few people are behind you and they're blocking for you. And look, you get some nice yardage right there out to the 35 yard line. Well, take that back, 32 yard line. The third possession for East Ascension here in the ball game. Again, they've mixed up the run in the pass. We'll see what they can do here. Browning, I think it's been very effective here tonight. Oh, there's a run for Taj. Taj is going to carry the pile. He picks up 13 yards and a cloud of dust as he finds a nice hole on the right side and a great job by Martinez Watch the right Green. side of the offensive line right here. And when you slip through just like that, uh, number 32 from West Monroe just barely missed the tackle there, Parker Todd. Remember, they're missing Walter Samuel from last year, the last few years. He's at Memphis now. So it's been a running back by committee, and Taj has taken, kind of taken over. This is Will, uh, Will, no, excuse me, this is Taj again. He'll well, pick up eight yards. Taj on the first play looked like a quick back. Then right. he looks like a mule coming through there. He does a good job of keeping his balance and is able to start and stop very quickly. Good vision, too. You're right. Very much so. Second, he picks up eight, brings up second and, and two. And the thing, I keep saying this, and I know East Ascension is down, but their offensive line a lot of times is getting good movement by the, on, on the defensive line. He'll pick up the first down after picking up four. Washington again on the carry. And Ties will take it across the 45 to the 43-yard line into Rebel territory. Well, Ties is... Moving a, a little bit slower, but boy, isn't that a great name for a running back? <laughs> and again, they are getting a big push up the middle. Uh, Bryson Martinez, you've got Kendall Green, Kend uh, Derez Queen to the center. This one doesn't quite go quite as well, but still picks up four. Check that. We'll give him three on that one. It brings up third, uh, second and seven. Washington on the carry again. That was made by number 92. Hayden Stewart was the defensive tackle on the tackle along with um, a platoon of Rebels. Ball resting directly at the 40-yard line of the Rebels. This is the sixth play of the drive that started back at their own 31. Well, I don't see the play Play Time. clock is not working, or at least it's not rolling. Into the flats and just led his intended receiver a little bit too much. Boy, Couldn't quite get a handle that, on that it. That was Thompson right there, and that it looked bad. like he was going to be able to turn that intended. corner. Watch that here, just off the fingertips of Thompson. Complete. Maybe needs to square up to him a little bit better. But look, you know, a lot of times that quarterback, when you go to throw – you're throwing from so many different directions, so many different angles. You know, it's just one of these things that you got to get the ball there. Yep. So last week they definitely ran uh, Wilson a lot more. But they have left Taj uh, Washington for the bulk of these carries. Browning finds his man, the fullback. Look at him go. It's Davis. Davis takes it all the way down to the 17-yard line. And Shasso with some nice blocking downfield, number eight. Jackson Shasso, watch this. Catch that look out in front of him now. Great job of blocking right there. And that is our water break timeout, and we will take a break as well. Don't go anywhere, folks. Six minutes left to go in the first half. 13-0 the score. The Rebels leading, but the Spartans are driving. This baby will get your heart racing as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. Internet speed so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's Rev. Welcome back, everybody. Six minutes left to go here in the first half. The Spartans 
You saw Davis. He is listed as a fullback, but he lined up in a, in a in a tight end position, and he just released from his man and caught that ball, got him down to the 17-yard line. Dancing his way for a little bit of help, making a couple of yards, making a couple of men miss is Brennan Thompson. And Thompson will pick up, that will give him three, well, two, brings up second and eight. This is the part of the field that they got in trouble with last time when they had that miscue on the fumble. But they are looking strong and, uh, and, and, and ready to rock and roll here on this drive. Ball resting at the 15-yard line. Clock rolling at 5.30 to go in the half. Great interview coming for you up at halftime. This is a handoff. Hudson on the quarterback keeper. To number 44. Oh, check that. That was, uh, uh, excuse me, Browning took it himself. Dirk Schechsneider will be our. So you say Browning just handed off to himself? He did hand off to himself. I, missed, I, I will say that that was uh, not my most eloquent call of a I'm going to tell you what, play. When, when you can do that, you could, you could probably start it anywhere. Yeah, that's right. League. Well, waiting for him to throw it to himself soon. Look for somebody to his left. Now rolling to his right. Re- receiver's going to release, but he's being chased still on his feet. And he will be finally brought down. And, and for both teams tonight, Jimmy, when you try to go left and right instead of north and south, right. defenses catch up with you. J.Q. Le- Turner made the stop. Unless you have some kind of serious speed, but you could see right there, Browning was trying to get out there to turn that corner and just could not do it. Well, he looked, he first, he dropped back and looked to his left, and there was nobody there. I thought somebody was going to break free in the end zone. Dutchtown versus Pontchartula, scoreless in the second quarter. Quick scoring update. Brings up fourth down. Fourth and 11, and they'll call a timeout. Wait, nope, excuse me, hang on. Flag. Play, Offside, so they'll give them five yards back, and that's actually will make up all the yardage they lost on the on the sack. So they're going to go forward on fourth and seven. Todd Washington in the backfield. Another flag will fly. Oh, man, he's got his man wide open. At the two-yard line into the end zone, but a flag will fly and blows the play dead. False start. Illegal procedure. Mm. So that'll back them up five more or back them up five again. Basically, Darnell Lee's got to be thinking. That play and the fumble down here while they were moving, those are two critical, crucial plays in this game. I'm not sure who moved. May have been the left side of the line. But, man, oh, man, Dumas was right there, wide open. Well, Let's see what they do here. Fourth and 11. Basically, you got the wide receiver on the other side, you know, one-on-one. Four receivers to the near side, one to the top so of you, your screen. So you have to pass. To, you you got to go to the right here. Dropping. Browning's got some protection. Crossing route. He makes the catch. He's at the five. He's down at the two-yard line. It was Dumas on the crossing route. What a great catch. He bobbled it and stuck with it. And I'm going to tell you what, Browning hung in there because it took a little while for that guy to get across the field and to stuck it in there and a nice job right there collecting it in and turning up field and getting inside the what, two? I think so. The ball, you say it's at the three, first and goal from the three. They'll do the jumbo package, attack it in, stack it in tight. Pushing, pushing, pushing. Flag will be flying at the two. We'll wait for Mr. Weathersby to make the call. Again, procedure against the offense. Backs him up five. That's tough. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm not a fan of this because, you know, Taj Washington has done an outstanding job in the spread, handing the ball off to him. 
the offensive line has done a very good job. You know, the, the play calling to me has been outstanding for East Ascension. Got, you know, they've moved the ball down the field. Uh, right here, here we go back to regular offense. And uh, let's just say with uh, under three minutes and the clock running, let's just see if we're going to run or pass this thing. It's going to be the Taj Washington. Cuts off the right side. He finds a hole. He's in for touchdown. Oh, my goodness, what a run there you go, from the nine-yard line. Nice call right there. There's your man, number five. And number 44 is pretty good, too, handing that ball off to him. Watch right there. Make a cutback, a lot of pile-up right there. Very good job there on the run. This is crucial. I, I just believe for Darnell Lee's team that they've had some success, but they don't have any points for it. That's right. And now That's they right. have some success and they have points. And it might, I don't know if it's going to finish like this the first half, but it could even block. Block. The extra point is blocked. It was Ramirez kicking, coming off the edge. Is one of the Rebels, and he blocks it full on. And, and boy, over the years, East Ascension has been solid in the kicking game. We'll take a break. 13-6 to 6 is where we remain. 2.36 to go here in the first half. Back after this on the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, We Live for This, Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Ten play drive started on their own 31 yard line for the Spartans, knocked in by a nine yard drive, a nine yard run by Taj Washington. This will be collected by Edmondson at the eight. Edmondson's got some running room around the right side. Check that the left side. He's at the 50, the 40. Is anybody going to catch him? All the way to the 10, five touchdown. No flags on the field, and that was a. 81 yard run and return and that's not what you wanted that's not what you wanted and uh you know a lot of times you got that middle return and you see right there and he just eases to the outside and whoever had that outside position there was on the ground because he missed the tackle right there and west monroe gets all excited on that sideline for a reason but look, watch how fast he is right here. He just threw it into another gear. He collected it, I believe, at, the, at his own 19-yard line and took it to the house. Whistle will blow, and it is up and good. And we have a 20-6 ball game with 221 left to go here in the first half. Let's take a look at West Monroe's last five years. Well, you see, you start down there, not bad in 18. Runner-up uh, finals, they've, they've won, uh, I think, nine or ten state championships. Uh, your quarterfinals, semifinals, these are all, you know, these are all West Monroe numbers right here. And uh, their head coach uh, passed away uh, after retirement or right around the retirement time, and Don Chow's. And the defensive coordinator, Jerry Arledge, took Matthew over. Westbrook. And it just seems like it was just a different West Monroe team. Still very good, uh, but not having near the success they had for years. Well, their last state championship was in 2011. So they've had a little bit of a drought for the last 10 years, 12 years. And we still got some time here in the first half. It is 221 left to go in the, in the first half. The kick is away, and it's a boomer. Angles toward the sidelines, and it's going to go out of bounds, so that'll be a penalty, and they'll get the ball at the 35-yard line with some time on the clock. And, you know, uh, I think if Darnell had to do it over, he said, let's just kick it out of bounds. <laughs> right. And give it to yeah. him on the 35. But they've done pretty well on kick coverage. And that one just got away from them. 
And again, you're right. I'm surprised at Edmondson's speed. That and it's, I don't know. It's just early. I don't. I don't know how people with all the heat issues have had time to cover all the kicking game. It's a good point. When you get on a turf, it's hotter. So what would you try to do here, Jim? I think you. I think you dink and duck down the field. About spread a it out. How about a screen to number five? I right like it. Here. They tried it. They just got it over his head. Rolling. Looking for somebody to throw to right across the middle. Another good play by Dumas. Dumas is a good football player. Can catch the ball well. Pulls it right out of the air. Picks up nine. I like the sprint pull and throw it back over the middle. Maybe uh, a little bit uh, behind some of the defenders there. Dumas is a good football player, but that was Justin Oob. So Justin Oob does a good job catching the football. I'm with you. A little bit too much time going uh -oh, on right here. Uh-oh, busted play. Looking for something to happen. Browning's going to dump it off. He finds his man. Got some running room at the 40-yard line before being tackled. The first down is there. And he picks up 17 yards on the pass in the scramble. You know, East Ascension right here needs to get it rolled. Keep it rolling right here. That, that, that was that Wilson. Clock, there it is. It started after they moved those chains. That clock's going to start. So that was Wilson. You know, Wilson, again, had the bulk of the carries last week. That time, just squirted out, stayed where his, needed his, uh, his quarterback needed him. Again, chased out of the pocket. How is he going to get out of this one? The sophomore quarterback tucks get it out of bounds. and great, gets out of bounds. Great job right there, Browning. Remember, he's only a sophomore. But he played like a senior right there. He played linebacker last year. Unbelievable. Picks up three yards on the on the scramble. Look, it, it was, it's not necessarily that, that it would be the end of the world that he got tackled back there. They called timeout. But he got out of that situation and got out of bounds, saving that timeout. 63 ticks of the clock here in the first half. Trying to make something happen here. 20 to 6 with a minute left till halftime. And we have uh, Dirk Shake Snyder, East Ascension teacher, is. Dropping back, looking for some help. Again, it's a jailbreak. He's going to scramble his way to the 30-yard line, still on his feet to the 25. He'll be rolled down at the 26. And that'll bring up another first down. So i got to hand it to the sophomore. He has done a phenomenal job. And look at him scramble. It is a jailbreak, though. They are coming hard. And quickness, make sure you got that ball because, boy, when you pass people up, they come back with that little arm in there. Nice job there by Browning. Here he is. 38 seconds to go. The clock is rolling. 30. East Ascension has timeouts left. Uh, uh, whistle blows. Timeout is called by East Ascension. Timeout called by Darnell Lee and the squad with 29. Well, they'll put some little bit of time back on the clock. I think. Maybe not. All right, coach. It's time to. Pull it out. You got 29 seconds. How many times you got? What do you got? Like three plays, four plays, maybe if you're quick. Well, you know, it, ju it just depends on what you're throwing. I I'm not real certain. This is what I see, and I and I'm sure uh, Coach Gaspar sees the same thing. Into the sideline, they mesh. They're, they're mounted on you real tight. Before the ball snap, he takes off. Ten yard out. Boom. Oh, yep. Stealing. Hundred percent. All right and uh, might be athletic enough to catch it and turn up. But I, you know, because you only have one timeout left, uh, I, I, you know, I guess I, I, I wouldn't mind trying it over the middle. I mean, basically, you have one safety in the middle. They're bringing five. He squirts through, still on his feet, and he will be – he Very will release good the job. football just in time. He was out well, of the tackle pass. box, but he was pulled down from behind by number 47. Well schooled up right Smoltz there. Smoltz Lilly. Well schooled up because. And look, let me tell you, that throw was just close to that uh, down box. Very close. You know, I'm going to give him credit. 
Well, he evaded one, one, one blitzer. He was coming right up the middle, and they just couldn't pick everybody up. 22 seconds on the clock, and they're bringing up everybody. Let's see. Clock has stopped, of course, on the incomplete pass. They've got a little time to get the play in. But again, they're having to keep the play clock on the field because our play clocks are not are not functioning properly. High snap, pulls it down, going for the end zone on a skinny post. He's got his man! Touchdown! East Ascension! Unbelievable! Watch Browning right here. Just like a veteran, he looks to the left and comes back. Watch him right here. Takes a peek that comes back right over the middle right there just to get six number six out of the way. That free safety saw that. He jumped, tried to help out on that sideline route up the field. Outstanding job right there by Browning and a nice job by the offensive line on the pass protection. And they have been allowing some porous plays and that one is up and we've got a one score ball game. 20 to 13 with 15 seconds to go. We'll keep it right here. And what a play, 26-yard pass, and he had been running for his life on several plays on this drive, a six-yard drive, six-play drive, excuse me. That little look, that little peek to the left had six. He made that little move, I believe. And I'm going to just tell you, this is something that you haven't had at East such a nice athletes at the uh, – uh, quarterback spot, but this guy right here is making some athletic plays and some mental plays out there too, which are very strong. And, and some of that you can't teach; it's almost instinct. And he has not had a lot of experience. But we're, the East Ascension is going to have Mr. Browning for a couple of more years. And that was, uh, by the way, Nige, Nigel Murphy on the catch. First time we've called his name in the last couple of weeks. And a big play for him. This is a squibber. It'll bounce. It'll be collected by Moore at about the 10-yard line, and Moore is going to be hammered to the ground. That's big right there for East Ascension because even though – now watch this tackle right here, and it's kind of a, a big-time tackle you see in high school right there. Bring him down. Now all the sidelines all fired up, and you're going to go in this locker room. Damar Gustav, by the way on the tackle nine seconds to go we've got a, a great halftime for you we'll listen to some of the band and we'll have a great interview and we'll oh, for a sophomore he's got a, a nice arm uh, i'm just impressed with his ability to see the field keep his eyes downfield while he's scrambling and again he didn't play quarterback last year he's a linebacker as a freshman so he's an athlete all the way around well, uh, old, West Monroe is going to take a knee, yep. and we're going to have a little halftime activity with the band, and then Dirk Shakespeare is going to come up and join us. We have got a lot of football left to go, but the East Ascension Spartans making up for some early miscues, and the Spartans have brought it within one score. It is 20 to 13 as we head to halftime. The Rebels leading the Spartans. We will be back right after this. And it is halftime. We just moved, so there's millions of people. Dahlia's in bloom, over nine acres. When we started, we grew a quarter of an acre. Now I'm taking on new products on the right. We always dreamed of having this property, so. I want to make my yard look as beautiful as largemouth bass. Yep. We've got tons of them, don't we, buddy? There are millions of ways to make the most of your land. How will you make the most of yours? Come see us at Ascension Equipment for John Deere sales and service. Save more today and mow tomorrow. Lamar Dixon's role from an entertainment standpoint is to be an economic engine for South Louisiana and Ascension Parish. To create an environment that people don't have to really leave their home in South Louisiana to have a world-class entertainment value. The partnership between Lamar and Rev has been a seamless marriage that I don't know how we live without. And really knew what they were talking about and took the time to learn what we did instead of just sell us a product. I knew that that was going to be our, our company for life. I highly recommend Rev Business.
Eco Builder Supply, your one-stop lumberyard, provides an extensive selection of quality building supplies for your new construction and remodeling. We offer computer-aided estimating of your building and remodeling plans, as well as blueprint copies. From humble beginnings to becoming the industry leader in Gonzales and beyond, Piku proudly supports our local community because we believe in giving back to those who have had a hand in our success. Let the experts at Piku Builder Supply help you with your new project today. This baby will get your heart racing as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at Let'sRev.com. Let's rev. Internet speed so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet, all the time. Build your plan at letsrev.com. Let's rev. This. This is a walk-on athlete. They push harder and put their heart into the game. This is the passion we're built on. It's why we put our heart into creating game day with a taste of Louisiana. Yeah. Walk on, we live for this. Welcome back to halftime, everybody. I'm Jimmy Frederick, along with me, Coach David Swacker, and what a uh, what, a, what an interesting first half of football that was. It was back and forth. The East Ascension Spartan defense really did a good job on the first drive against the Rebel offense. Then then, then they were driving. We were driving down. So we, East Ascension was driving down the field, had that miscue. But they came back and overcame that. Now, granted, they're down a score, but that's it. And it could be much worse. It, 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 it could be down a score, and it could be tied right now That's right. also. But That's right. Look, I'm, I'm going to just tell you, we talked about the things. What are we going to look for? You want to get better. Right now, East Ascension has gotten a lot better, a lot better. from last week. 100%. It is time for the East Ascension Marching Band under the direction of Charles Lee and David Gambino. We'll turn it over to Halftime Entertainment. We'll be back after this with a great interview coming up in just a minute. The band and color guard march to a mashup of Lone Los X and Katy Perry. Here's industry alien.
The Pride of EA now welcomes our sparkling Spartanettes to the field. I know most of us remember the late 80s, so how about some Bobby Brown as our girls show you what they mean with my prerogative. The Pride of VA Band Director is Charles Lee, Assistant Director David J. Gambino, Music Correspondent Alexis Bistro, Color Guard Instructor Francis Knight, and Anaya okay, Hendricks. Nice. The dance team is under the there. direction of Stevie Barrow, yeah. Bailey Ramey, and London Rowell. Great job there Please by the sure East the Ascension band. Marching Band. band. First part of our halftime show. Now we have we'll up with us in the press box, time. Dirk Shakespeare, a teacher slash and does everything else uh, <laughs> here at East Ascension. And I'm going to get him going and let him talk about a number of things coming up in football during the football season this year. Let's start about the Santa game. Oh, the Santa game. I am glad it's here on Burnside this year. Everybody can fit. Everybody's got a good place to park. Uh, but we have something planned this year. Uh, we have a special guest coming back. Uh, and let's just say it's 20 years in the making. I can't give more details is than that, that right Tracy now. Is that Tracy Swacker that's coming back? <laughs> she is welcome anytime. One of her live uh, <laughs> halftime shows. Like she likes to report for us. Uh, but it's going to be a little bit bigger than Tracy Swacker coming back. Uh, but we're very excited. We have a big guest coming, someone very special to EA. Uh, and you'll see that when uh, the big rivalry kicks off on the first week in October. And what we're going to do is we're just going to have a little raffle, we'll see who can come up with the right name? Yeah, I think and we so. we might be able to make a little money off of <laughs> we this could. right here. We could. So, pregame yeah. event. What do we have there on a pregame event? So, the pregame is a new tradition at EA, which is something we, we buy into a lot at and EA. Pregame to what game? Pregame to the Santa Mall game, of course. So, the yes. shout-out uh, had – 
run its course, and uh, last year was the first year without doing that tradition. Uh, so EA put in a new deal where we were going to have an event for ourselves at Spartan Stadium, kind of a, a tailgate, a warm-up uh, to get ready. So uh, we are back with that. We are excited. The kids loved it last year. We had the community out. We had little kids and bounce houses. We had a huge fireworks display again, which we have something special with that this year. So it will be even larger than the fireworks show we put on last year. But we're excited about that. Uh, there may be some other things. We have not quite finalized everything. But if you went to it last year, you can expect more than what you got. Well, my wife tells me every day is a pregame event at East Ascension. It said this place is packed with enthusiasm and joy. <laughs> and we had our first Booster Club meeting a few weeks ago, and uh, Coach Lee had a great line. He says, there's two people in Ascension Parish. I was like, oh, Lord, where is he going with this? <laughs> he said, there's two people in Ascension Parish. He says, they're Spartans, and there's people that want to be Spartans, and that is the truth. Uh, our kids buy into EA. Our fans buy into EA. Our, our alumni buy into EA. And, uh, yeah, it's different. You know that, that saying on the SEC network, it just means more? EA could take that as well. And uh, there is another saying, we are EA. Absolutely. <laughs> very good, very good. I'm going to tell you, every principal would love to have the situation that y'all have at East Ascension. It is truly a family situation. There's no doubt about it. And it's great. I'm, I'm sure at Dutch Sound, I haven't been over there. I've been at, at Santa Mar. My wife says, I was a failure at Santa Mar. He said, we could have done so much better. But, you know, it, it's a good job over there. There are great schools here in Ascension Parish. Absolutely. Popcorn sale. Yeah, we are, we are never short for another event at EA. And right now we have a four-day event uh, where we're selling popcorn. It's easy. You get an, uh, a link on your phone. You order, it ships directly to your house. But what's good, every, every club, every team on campus is involved. So every, every organization can make money off of this. But the overarching thing we're trying to make money for is we have a new campus coming next year, August of 2024. And uh, we got to do it right. We're going to get a normal school, but it's got to be an EA school. So we have some statues and some... Um, some decoration we're going to put up, and we need some funding for that. So the uh, this popcorn sale is going to go towards that. Uh, but we have some bigger uh, ideas of how we're going to get all that put together because we're just a few months away from opening up a brand new campus. And you know the original EA lasted 56 years, so we got to recreate that magic on this new building. Uh, they are doing tremendous progress. The, the bricks are coming up on the front of the school. It looks absolutely beautiful, but we got to make sure it has all the bells and whistles. So that pop, if you're an EA fan, buy that popcorn from your Spartan student or Spartan teacher, and help us decorate that school. So, when are you in the classroom? <laughs> I promise I report to class. Uh, when the bell rings, I turn it on, I teach, uh, I do my part. Hey, I drove a bus this afternoon. You know, whatever they need me to do. Oh, I tell you what, they need to also say you're a coach then because that is the definition of a coach, I believe. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can do everything. You have to, yeah. All right. What do we have here? This Aesthetics? The aesthetics campaign is what we're launching. It is a, uh, it's the initiative to get those statues on campus. Uh, in a few weeks, we're going to be meeting with some prominent alumni and donors of the school to really kick off this campaign to make it look like a campus we've been a part of for decades and not just a brand-new building that looks generic. Oh, nice. I, I tell you what, man. I'll take you for a personal tour when it opens. Oh, definitely. Look. We'll get the I, rev cameras in there. We. We can do that, can't we? Absolutely. <laughs> we can yeah. yeah, we can do it. So, Dirk, I came through here with Tracy, my wife, when we had the, the pep rally. Yeah. It took me two hours to go through. Some people thought I was, I was a coach at East Central. <laughs> so, unbelievable. And then all the, the, the pep rally in the gym – I think it wasn't really planned, and it just every, the gym was packed with people, and the nice little sayings. I won't go on air, and talk, <laughs> but Third just of tonight's game, the Bob love Bob of the people of Gonzales basically for this school delighted. right here. Last thing, and we have the teams warming up right here, so we have a few minutes. 
As Every well, year, there's, you pick a special uh, game to have a bus trip. Okay, first of all, what's the game? All right, so the, the bus trip this year, we try to go with the, the game that's the furthest, the hardest for the kids to get to. So this year's schedule, that's Destrahan. Uh, so next week, we'll have two to three buses loaded up with Spartan students. And we're going to get there, and they're going to cheer themselves uh, to victory for EA. The theme is hippie, so I don't know what that's going to look like in the student section. Watch <laughs> out. Um, but, yeah, last year we went all the way to Alexandria, and it was very hot. And we hit a lot of traffic, but we made it a few minutes late. But uh, we made it to that game. So it's a tradition we've done for several years now. Uh, the very first one I did, I think it was back in 2010, and we went to East St. John with about 40 kids. And last year we took three buses with like 108 kids. So it's something they expect. It's on the kids' calendar, uh, and it's it's a really it's a it's hot on that bus. It's 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 bumpy on that bus, but it's where they create a lot of memories. I went to Destrehan yesterday. A bunch of us elderly coaches met down there and had a little meal. I'm going to just tell you, nice selection of Destrehan. Oh, they got a nice stadium. Yes. A very nice stadium, plenty of uh, plenty of size on the visitor side, and you know what? Even on a bus, I'm going to say an hour drive from East City. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be way shorter than going to Alexandria. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we had a few trips last year. We had West Monroe, Alexandria, and Neville. We got so, our we got our miles in last yes. year. So, uh, boy, boy, I'm going to just tell you. So when a kid writes in whatever their senior book or whatever their experiences at East Ascension with um, I don't, i'm not going to say flood but you know that that that's an experience right but all, all the things that have happened to our community and it's amazing how our school board comes together they fixed up galvez where i was at school right uh just everything that they do and uh you come out better yeah and it doesn't happen there like that everywhere it yeah. just doesn't I, I think it's the people of ascension parish that would that what makes everything so special here which makes things really good here we have dirk shake Snyder, and we appreciate that dirk you're the man i, I i'm gonna call you the administrator <laughs> at large <laughs> good job there Absolutely. Dirk. appreciate it appreciate a lot, you having dude. me up here thank you all right take care we'll be back Second half in just a second. The West Monroe Rebels will be kicking off here in the beginning of the third quarter. East Ascension will receive. It is time for the third quarter, everybody. We are so glad that you have stuck with us because this is turning out to be an exceptional football game. We are ready to rock and roll here, and East Ascension, who deferred to the second half, will have the football to start this third quarter and what a what a great way to end the first first half and you know getting the ball back with that momentum is going to be a big factor here you know coach this game is what started east ascension on their run last year when they won in overtime so you know this is a big game for them mentally and and not just psychologically but also just in reality i mean they're playing the number nine team in the state this kick is away. It will be collected and bobbled, but he's able to hang on to it. And he is taken down the at the 11-yard line. One, well, it wasn't really a – you had two good things that could happen Tackle to you. Catch the ball in the air, number one. Big number bounce, five, catch the ball in the air. And uh, didn't do a very good job either one of those. So well, instead of out here to the 31 or 32 that we had – on a previous return, uh, you're back at the 15-yard line or maybe 20-yard line. Take it at the 15. I'm not sure where the chain gang's going, but there we go. First and 10 from their own 15-yard line for East Ascension. The sophomore quarterback back out on the field along with Taj Washington. Hand off to Taj. The bowling ball is going to see if he can't make something happen as he hits a wall of Rebels. He picks up three. So, West Monroe, veteran coaches over there. They're going to make a change right here and see what they do. And then you got to have the same thing happen right there. You know, you got Taj and you got Browning in that backfield. You got to be making some plays along with the low passing game that they've done a great job at tonight. They gave him four on that second and six. 
Handoff again to Washington. He kind of tries to pick his way through the crowd, and he goes nowhere. Cole Stevens, the middle linebacker of the, of the linebacker, is there to make the stop along with the several others. He is an undersized linebacker right now, but uh, the coaching staff at West Monroe think he's going to be a special football player. You know, all, all your high schools have some type of lifting program. You know, West Monroe's been big, big into the power lifting over the years. All right. Here we go, third and five. This is big. Deep in their own territory. Quick pass. Out a little bit high, but the catch is made. He will get the first down and more to the 34-yard line. Well, Chasson, nice job right there with the catch. Jackson Brought it down right here. Watch the throw. Good job of catch and throw. Good job of bringing it down. Covering it up for the first down. And then he makes Chris Dade, the cornerback, miss him and just like a whiff. I mean, it was uh, alligator claws out there. Brings Chass up first and ten. Chasson's a starter from last year. Oh, that's going to be offsides, I believe. Nope, the game false start. It looked like I didn't see the guy jump, but well, we had the left guard jump. Did he? Yep. Uh, it was just a matter of who was going to uh, make the call right there. Sixth penalty of the game for East Ascension. And it brings up uh, first and 15 now, the ball at the 28-yard line. You know, that that's a deal to me that is crucial in, in, in all facets of football is trying to see what they're lined up in and get them to jump off sides. Even if it doesn't work, it gives you a little bit more time to think about the play. They rush four, handing off to Wilson. Uh, Wilson will get back to the original line of scrimmage and maybe a couple of more, so he picks up yeah, seven. Wilson, on the Boy, Wilson does an outstanding job on this little outside zone, a sweep left into the sidelines, gets behind that big, massive wall offensive lineman and is able to uh, make a little move inside, then outside down the sideline, uh, picking up a nice gain on the play. The left tackle. Um, sorry, Kelvin Gray did a good job on that one, number 62. He's been doing a good job all night. He, uh, he took over for Aiden Joseph because Aiden, of course, went over to the defensive side of the ball. Quick pass to the right, and it's going to be caught. Number 15, Dumas. Short on the play right there, but boy, you don't see this in the replay right here, but the corner backs off, and uh, Coach Gaspard has done an uh, outstanding job of calling the little short hitch. I don't know if it's just a, uh, a receiver uh, isolation play, whether you either run the hitch or we're going to run a vertical, but they have been about 100% on that little hitch and being an athlete and try getting near first down. Third and one, and it is stopped. He will lose two yards, maybe three on the play, and it brings up fourth down at about the 39. Tried to just take it himself. Well, actually, no, he handed it off to Davis. Sorry, the fullback. Well, And we're going to punt this one, it looks like. I, I would say that's probably the same thing that's on LSU's mind. <laughs> what do we have to do? And I'm going to say a lot of times that little outside play, little toss sweep. I don't understand why people don't do it more. I really don't. He only lost a yard. I thought he lost three. But they will punt this one away. Anthony Audemont will do the honors. It's only a second punt, low snap, plenty of time, no rush. This one's a better punt than the last one, and it will take a Spartan roll to the 31-yard line. 31-yard line, that is where the Rebels will take over. And you might think right here, uh, Jimmy, have these teams played much, you know, in the playoffs and stuff like this? No, regular season last year, and it's – and East Ascension's up one nothing. Not many people can say that in this state. That's right. Let's just take a look at the top ten. John Curtis is still number one. Catholic number two. Destrahan number three. Who East Ascension has next week 
Edna Carr, then Zachary. Rustin, St. Aug, Karen Crow. You see West Monroe moved up from 10 to 9, and Acadiana rounds out the top 10. And in boy, the Acadiana got bounced pretty hard. Uh, well, just like this game started in the eye backfield and continues on. Also on that uh, top 10 right there, you saw Curtis and Zachary supposed to play this week. Not going to happen. Forgot about that. Good Not going to happen. Miscommunication between the two coaches or the two teams. And not going to happen. One yard pickup on the f- first down play it brings up second and nine. Federico under center is going to hand off to Willis. And Willis, this defense stiffens. They say, no, sir, you're not going anywhere. Nathan Allen, Kel- uh, uh, Aiden Joseph, along with the linebackers of Jupiter and Isom. Boy, this is typical Don Child's offense right here. We are going to wear them out. And evidently it's not working real well right now. We are going to wear them out. And in the end, then we're going to start making big plays. They pick up a yard, and there's a timeout on the field. And that is our water hydration timeout. We will take a break as well because we need a little. We're parched up here. Six minutes to go in the third quarter. We'll be back after this. No score here in the third yet, except it is 20 to 13. We'll be back after this. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk Ons, We Live for This. Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Welcome back to the third quarter again. It is 20 to 13. When I said no score, I mean no one had scored yet in the third quarter. 20 to 13 is our score. The Rebels leading with the bat with the football. And it is third and seven. Play action. Play action. Pass. Dropping back. Looking for somebody. There's nobody to throw to that are covered well downfield. Being chased out of the pocket. He's got some running room. He gets the first down and a yard more. He picks up eight yards on the carry and scampers for the first down. Well, what an effort right there on the play. On the keeper. By our quarterback. And just picked up a yard more than what he needed for that first down. Big play right there for West Monroe. Good coverage downfield. It really was. Because he, he was really, he had time. Was, he wasn't really being, being chased. And then there was nobody to throw to. He had to do something. And unfortunately, he was able to scoot around to the left edge. And, you know, uh, I'm not real certain. How much speed uh, West Monroe's quarterback has, but the linemen were chasing him, and they're not even getting close. No, no linebackers involved in that play. Fifth play of the drive here, first and ten from the 41-yard line, and that is going to be a lot of movement right there. Yeah, they called the timeout. Not illegal movement, but a lot of movement. A little that confusion. Cost them. All right, here's uh, the Dutch Town, Santa Ma, East Ascension, Walker, Denham, and uh, Live Oak District. You know, we had two Thursday night games that uh, Live Oak lost and Denham won. And then Dutch Town is tied at halftime right now. Santa Ma's ahead by two scores right now. And Walker uh, don't have a report on them right now. So we'll, we'll look also at the – Let's take a look at uh, the West Monroe District. Yeah, the 25A district, see what they have. And uh, it's a pretty stout district. In fact, we're going to be playing Ash coming up. All right, let's go. We'll come back to this. First and 10. Ball at the 42-yard line. Coming out of the timeout, let's see if there's any more confusion. They probably got it squared away. Dropping back one step. Throws it low. The catch is made on the sideline to Edmondson. Federico will connect and pick up eight. You know, I I know if you have a strong safety, which would be 
Uh, this guy, the outside backer there, he should be able to get under that right there, but he, he basically dropped. You have to get under the, the out route or the curl route right there. So he was kind of – he's got to get an idea where that receiver is going to go. That was this one. Brings up second. Only gave him seven on that one, second and three. This is – Willis and Willis will pick up the first down. Picks up seven on that carry. And the chains will move once again into Spartan territory. Cade Willis on the carry. Run out of bounds by East Ascension number seven. Lamar Bowen. Just hits the hole quickly. Pick up the first down. And it will be Issam chasing him first down, but he's finally brought down by Lamar Bolden. 43 yard line now in East Ascension territory. First and 10 for the Rebels. Rebels methodically taking this one. As they started at their own 31-yard line, this is the eighth play of the drive. Pulls it back. Nope, hands it off to Willis. Willis, defensive end stayed home but couldn't make the tackle. There's a flag flying, and he will finally be knocked out of bounds. Well, Willis outruns one. That was McZeal. Another one. Outstanding job right there. Got two good number fives in this game. D'Ron McZeal made the stop. And the flag on the play. Holding, Holding on the offense. The against the Rebels. So that'll back him up. I, I would say, Jimmy, another thing that basically you haven't noticed anything, but it, the officiating seems to have been outstanding tonight. Well, we haven't heard from him as much as we did last week, thankfully. And there wasn't little penalties last week. There were personal foul penalties. There's yes. that stiff arm you talked about, and then McZeal coming up. I mean, we had seven personal foul calls last week. Well, one of the things uh, was to get a little bit better. And they've done it. First and 15 now. The ball back at the 47. Dropping back. Looking for somebody to throw to is Federico. Federico lets it loose. Almost caught. By his intended receiver, unbelievable effort and, by Moore, and almost caught by McZeal also. Well, that ball came was, off the fingertips. It was Davis, actually, Correction, the intended receiver, intended. right there. Oh, and Trez Davis, McZeal right Davis. there. Bring up a second and fifteen for the Rebels. Second and 15, hand off to Willis. Willis picks his way through the line. Flags flying everywhere. He will pick up seven yards if it stands, but I doubt it will. I believe it's going to be a hold. Well, that's your umpire. He's in, he's in the holding area, basically uh, stationed right there with the defensive linebackers. Flags going to be holding against the Rebels. So that's two holding penalties on this drive. And let's see if we could see it. I didn't. I don't know if it was number 70 there. I, I, I'm going to I'm, I'm just Rebels make this prediction. Own, Quarterback's going deep. Yeah. Going long right here. Second and 25, I think you're probably right. Well, I'm not even considering that. You know, they, 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 they have had some success in the long passing game. And this might be your try right down here on the right side. That's Edmondson. There's a well, they actually oh screen pass and still on his feet. Nobody can bring him down. It's Trez Davis, and Trez will pick up 18 yards on the on the quick screen. Well, you know, most coaches would say this is a running play. Better and if it is, it's a complete. nice run. Yeah. And he Steel caught it right behind. there. That'll bring up a third and eight for the Rebels. So 17-yard pickup brings up third and eight. So they picked up a lot of that Pass yardage right back. To number four, Therese Davis. 41-yard line is where the ball rests. 321 left in the third. Tenth play of the drive. Remember, it started back at their own 31. They've moved up and back and back and up. And, and in a... Typical third down situation that you need to have a big play by one of your players. 
Dumps it off out of the backfield to Willis. Willis is wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Forget about it. That is number 34, and that was huge, of course, Wow. Well done by and, uh, Issam. And I'm telling you, I thought was a very well executed play. You got a fake, and you got a look, and a quick little pass out there. Linebacker all over it. Nice play. And they're going to punt this one away. Daniel Lane will do the honors. Set to receive is Trenton Palmer. Number one, Matthew Collins. Check that, Matthew Collins. We have two number ones listed. It's Matthew, Matthew Collins set to receive the kick. Kicking for the Rebels, number 31, Daniel Lane. They blew the play dead. Uh, you know, this I see uh, uh, East Ascension coach bringing over. Maybe that's Darnell Lee bringing Illegal over. The, wow. Illegal substitution gives him five yards. Does that change your thinking here? Why not? Because that that kick was maybe 15 yards. Right. Oh yeah, that definitely changes the thing. Changes things here. Big penalty. Need to get your defense out there, which I, I think probably defense was out there, just looking for a fake. McZeal will come back out on the field. Bolden's out there. Again, the play clocks aren't working on the field, so it's being it's being uh, monitored by the referees by the by the referees on the field. But they can't have a lot of time. This is taking a lot of time, and they didn't call a timeout. Brings up fourth and four. Going to try to get him to jump. Lisa Setcher does a good job uh, staying intact. They've got a fullback in the game. And it will be a handoff to Willis. Willis is not going to get there. A big stop by the defense. Tried to go right off the center, the A gap, and there was nowhere to go. I, I think the sweep was the play. <laughs> oh, did you see the fullback make contact? And he was like two yards deep in the backfield. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule for East Ascension. We've already had Zachary. We've had West Monroe. We're having West Monroe now. Destrahan's huge. You're not, yeah. They didn't lose by four. Yeah. Uh, they didn't lose, you know, had four. Yeah, we had six or seven. Seven. Yeah. Uh, Alexandria is coming up. De La Salle. None of these are easy. And then you've got the big Santa Mall game coming up on October 6th. Big play this time by Washington. Washington's just such a downhill runner. So and, hard to bring down. And, and you're Washington one yard short. How about let's throw the ball down the field. Let's see what happens here. Tackle was made by number six. Maybe you got a little option route here, Jimmy, in case they start bailing yeah, out. You just hitch it up, and we, that's been very successful for them. This is the play to do it. Second and one. A short one, that half a yard. Taj. Taj will take it, and he just blows up number 42, Cole Stevens. Stevens will hang on, but not before he gets the first down. Excellent play right there. Cole Stevens. First down for the Spartans. Spartans move the chains. And, you know, both of these teams are going to be two platoon. So, you know, you, you, you're not thinking, you know, sure, they may be getting tired, but it's not from going two ways or whatever. I, I, I think we're going to see a short pass here. I truly believe that. Going to go into the sideline or maybe out here to Chasson uh, to the field. Clock rolling at 115 left in the third quarter. Quick pass, just as you predicted, but it was a little bit too quick and out of the reach of the intended receiver. First time, not successful. And, and look, all he's doing is trying to get rid of it as quick as possible. So it times out where I plant, the receiver turns around, the ball's there. You know who hasn't been targeted is Jacoby Mitchell. He caught four balls last week and hadn't had been targeted at all. He actually five catches for 57 yards.
Nigel Murphy was the intended receiver on that last one, number 11. He's at the top of your screen. Two receivers to the near side. Wallace goes in motion. Big run up the gut. Picking up 10. Jeremiah Wilson on the carry. Jeremiah Wilson. Picks up about 12. Tyler Gaspar. The, first down the, the offensive coordinator. Why, watch the little shift right there. Maybe changes uh, the strength of the offense. And the defense doesn't really move, I don't believe. Nope. And uh, there you go with about 12 yards. Maybe we don't have to throw the ball here, huh? <laughs> Well, you know, one of the keys was controlling the line of scrimmage, and for the bulk of this football game, East Ascension has done that on offense. Offensive line is open enough holes, and that is what Coach Lee is really excited about. There's Jacoby Wilson, excuse me, Jacoby Mitchell, and Mitchell will get his first catch of the game, and he'll pick up three. Good job right there. If you get him a little bit more in the backfield where he's away from the defense. Yep. Jacoby. He was a big part of last week's game. Got to get him involved a little bit more here in the second half. Four seconds, and that'll do it for the third quarter. We head to the final stanza. East Ascension on the march, but they trail by seven. 20 to 13 is the score as we head to the fourth quarter here on the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment. Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, We Live for This, Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Let's take a look at what's coming up on the Rev Game of the Week next week. And we've got Covington at Dutchtown Homecoming. That'll be on Rev. And then I'll be doing the Santa Maud John F. Kennedy game. That was supposed to be on Friday. It has now been moved to Thursday. So I'll have we'll have uh, Santa Maud and John F. Kennedy. Two weeks, Alexandria at East Ascension. Opelousas will be at Santa Maud. Of course, it's live streamed on Rev Sports 1 and Rev Sports 2. The Santa Maud game will be on Rev Sports 2. The Dutchtown game on Rev Sports 1. You can always catch replays Sunday night, Sundays at 6 a.m., Wednesdays at 9.30 p.m., and Sunday evening. Here we go. And there's a flag that will fly. That will blow the play dead, and it will be a false start, and that's hard coming out of the, of the time out of the quarter. Well, I see since your band's uh, blowing horns over there, and uh, Browning's got to learn that, you know, when that happens, you got to get a little louder. West Monroe's the one that should be blowing the horns right down there. All. So it brings up second down and 11. I have the seventh penalty of the game for East Ascension. That's not an official stat, of course. And... I'm telling you, the game's long. Dropping back. Doesn't have much time. Flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Broken up by Edmondson. Looking for Ja'Cory Mitchell. And that was a little bit behind him. And I'm afraid he got away with one that time. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you what. He would have had to make a tackle on this one. Scramble outside. And just kind of went, went off the uh, receiver's hands a little bit. But... Defensive back probably had a good opportunity there. Or you, you get that, you know, it's so hard to drive the ball, you know, whatever, 60, 70, 80 yards. And um, because the, the NFL guys and college guys can basically use the passing game. Right. High school is a little bit more difficult at times. Third down and 11 this is a big play. In the middle to Ja'Cory Mitchell. Mitchell will pick up six, but it's not going to be anywhere close to a first down. I expect they're going to go for it. A tackle that time by J.Q. Turner, the junior linebacker. They've been successful on this. Kind of read that strong safety. Mitchell just kind of curls up in there about five or six yards. You're going to need right around six. 
five to six yards. I was impressed with Mitchell's ability to use his body to shield the defender from the ball on that last play. Rolling, difficult play. Like you say, he rolled out. Oh, my gosh. Mitchell should have had that when he was wide open and hit him in the hands on fourth down, and they turned the ball over on downs. That, that's painful. Nice job. A little reverse out. Give Mitchell time to get across the field. Nice pass protection. Great throw right there just to not bring it in. West Monroe's schedule coming up. Of course, they beat Sterlington 14-3 last week, playing EA tonight. Then Delhi Charter, Scotlandville, and Zachary. That's a tough one. I and tell you what, I don't even know what has happened with Scotlandville. I mean, they got beat extremely bad. Yep. West Monroe will take over. The They'll go travel to Pineville, Delaware. West Washita, and then Washita, Ash, and Ruston. And you see the Astros right there. That's their, all their district games. Washita ought to be a big one because that's where their head coach came from. Yep, yep. And, of course, Ruston in North Louisiana is always going to be <laughs> you're, not, you're not kidding there. First and ten, the ball resting at the 26-yard line. Check that, the 36-yard line of the Rebels. What we got now? Flag on play, delay of game. West delay of game, wow. Again, remember. So when, when the clock on the field does not work, the deep official first and 15. keeps it. And at 10 seconds, he will raise his hand so the quarterback knows that we have 10 seconds left. Now, I will say that 99% of the quarterbacks are always going to be looking at the clocks even though they're not moving. Right. Well, I keep doing it. <laughs> and I'm not really uh, worried about it as much as he is. Play action. Dropping back. Looking for somebody to throw to. He heaves it down the field. Just trying to throw it up. And it's knocked away. It almost batted in. It was batted in the air. And almost caught by the receiver who was really nowhere near in position to make the but catch. That was David pass. Moore. Oh, who was uh, intended, who was the intended seven, receiver? Right, the receiver oh, ran a double three. move. It was an out and up. He's essentially did a very good job. That's number three. That's Thompson. Thompson does an outstanding job rerouting, knocking it kind of away until, boy, that receiver almost caught that where he might have got an assist there. <laughs> the good old tip drill. Great, great coverage. This ball a little bit overthrown. Brennan Thompson the Six-foot senior playing the cornerback spot. Brings up second and 15. Hand off to Willis. Willis has got a hole on the left side. He will be chased down from behind after picking up about seven. Very good job there. Jupiter makes the stop. East Ascensions. Jakari Jupiter on the tackle. Willis right there. Like we said, uh, they have a couple of number fives out here that are really doing a heck of a job for both teams tonight. You're right. We just see uh, number nine, Aiden Joseph, coming off the field. Big number 99. Again, played offensive line last week, moved over to the defensive line this week. He's done a good job of filling up some holes. Brings up third down and seven. The ball at the 39. Calls for it. Federica hands off to Willis again. Same exact play, and he'll be chased down again from behind, but after picking up eight yards in the first down, and it will be Camden Womack, the defensive end, having to come back and clean watch, things up. Watch, watch behind this offensive line right here and how the hole opens up right there. And you, you got the pancake there by Big 77 on West Monroe. Uh, that's uh, Ty George. He's a sophomore. Well, he, he made a senior play right there, and – Nice job there by George, pancaking. That way that, that running back had an even wider hole to get through. Good job, too. He kicked out uh, Camden Womack, but Womack was able to come back and make the play. But that's how the hole was opened up, just like you said, first and ten. Ball back to Willis. This time they're not going to let him do the same thing. And guess who makes the play? Big Aiden Joseph. Forget about it. Willis on the carry. A loss, he tackle for loss that time. Joseph Hobby right here does an outstanding job reaching for that ball and it kind of fumbled around in that running back's hands. 9-19 left to go here in the ball game. Quick scoring update. Dutchtown leading 6-0 now with 11-13 remaining against Ponchatoula. 
So, second down and 12. Fifth play of the drive out of the shotgun. Handoff this time to a new running back who's got some speed. He's not the bowling ball type, the fire plug. He's the speed demon, but he only picks up five. Andrew McNeil on the carry. McNeil on the carry. Stop was made. Number 34. I tell you what, a nice Ron run Heisen. right there. Pick up a West Monroe, a little different look other than that power be football between the tackles. Get outside and uh, pick up four on the play. I got to tell you, um, Shaq Isom had – 14 tackles last week. He's got, I don't know how many he has this week, but he, he just got another one. Number 34 has been all over the field defensively. Brings up third down, and I'm going to say a long seven, maybe a short six. Excuse me, the other way around. Let's call it seven. Third and seven. Out of the shotgun, looking to dump it off in the flats, and he can't get it there. Incomplete. It brings up fourth down, and they will have to punt this one away. A punt team comes on. Nice job there by East Ascension's defense. Uh, Coach Scott Pellegrin, defensive coordinator for the Spartans. Outstanding job. You know, gave a little bit, but in close quarters to first down, was able to stop uh, the West Monroe offense. Matthew Collins comes onto the field to receive the kick. He will set up at his own 11-yard line. Lane will do the honors to punt this one away. He's only punted three times so far tonight, and that is a boomer. My word, a high kick that will hit at the five and check up. You couldn't hit a sand wedge that good, Coach. Uh, my sand wedge would have been three feet high and probably on Burnside Avenue. <laughs> Boy, now, nice. Boy, did you see the technique of the punter right there? I mean, his foot had to really – extend out to get that nice job on the punt what a nice job that's the best punt we've seen in uh well in the entire season yeah, punting again you can't punt in the gym coach this is just not a uh punt pass and kick ne needs to re revise their uh contest <laughs> it will check up and end up at the uh, eight yard line so deep in their own territory is East Ascension. You got two receivers to the near side and two to the top of your screen. Empty backfield. Coming in motion. And it will be a direct snap, actually, to number eight. Ball back number nine, Caden Gotro. Gotro, number nine, excuse me. Left side. So I'm not sure. If they just uh, were doing a direct snap to, to Gotro, or if there's something wrong with Browning. I don't see Browning anywhere. So Gotro's in at quarterback, number nine. Give you some stats on him in a second. Gotro calls for the football. Rolls to his right, throws on the run, misses his intended target of Dumas, and it brings up third down. So we got a report from our great sideline guys that uh, Browning may be injured. I see him. He may have just gotten. He may have gotten overheated. Seven oh eight. We don't want to speculate. He's on his own power, but he looks like he's getting some hydration. Brings up third down. Gotro has been thrown into a tight spot here, deep in their own territory. Down a score. He'll take it himself. Rolls. Looks for the throw. Intended for Dumas again, and he can't find him. It's going to be fourth down. They're going to have to punt it deep in their own, out of deep in their own end zone, and that is not East Ascension strong suit. Well, it's not the, a strong suit, and good job there by Gotro. Getting outside, just could not get that ball down the field with a completion. They will put it away. Button for the Spartans, number 45, Francisco Ramirez. 
deep in his own end zone, and he will punt it. Pretty good effort this time. It's going to bounce and roll to about the 40-yard line before it goes out of bounds. So a 40-yard punt. I mean, it's not too shabby. He's just deep in his own territory. 6.52 to go. They're running out of time, Coach. And I'm going to tell you, a couple of first downs, that clock is going to whittle down quick. But you also have a score right here. Could be the deciding factor. Let's take a look at what's coming up next week in 5-5A non-district games. You've got, of course, Santa Ma and, e and, and uh, Kennedy. We'll have, the, have, we'll have that one on Rev Sports 2 on Thursday. Covington at Dutchtown, also on Rev. East Ascension at Destrahan. Liberty at Denham Springs. Bonneville at Live Oak. And Mandeville at Walker. Actually, uh, the Santa Mar game, I'll have to check, but it's probably on Rev Sports 1. We'll send out the link for sure. And, of course, you can watch the replays on Rev TV. Hand off to Willis. Willis tries to go right up the middle. Not afraid to go in Willis against the monk of the trees. And uh, he will be brought down again by Shaq. Shaq Isom. This, this is what football is all about right here for a lot of football coaches, a lot of football players. Let's get in here with our offensive line and see if we can make something happen right here. Give our, uh, give our backs a chance. Smash mouth football from the word go. Slow down your play calling. You know, get to the line with, well, I don't know. Let's, let's watch the uh, deep judge. Pulls it back. Does the quarterback, Federico. Federico's got some room. He's at the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Forget about it. No flags, and they add six more. All about on the outside here, it looks like to me, Coach. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he also had the pitch. Yep. You know, that was uh, for him right there. Good job. It was the offensive lineman downfield blocking. Federico right there said, man, college baseball has got to be as much <laughs> fun as this. Now well, still got to go through a high school season of football and baseball. 36-yard scamper for number three Federico. Fox's extra point is good. PAT is good, and with we will take a break. With 6.06 remaining in the game, in the East Ascension trails 27 to 13 versus the Rebel. Back right after this on the Rev. This baby will get your heart racing as much as your slick new devices do. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at letsrev.com. Let's Rev. Internet speed so fast, you're going to need seatbelts for your sofa. Switch to Rev. No contracts, no data caps, no nonsense. Just all fiber internet all the time. Build your plan at letsrev.com. Let's Rev. We are back. It has been a back-and-forth football game. It's been a well-played game by both of these teams, but that was a, a tough one late in the game with 6.06 .06 to go here in the fourth quarter. This will be collected at the five-yard line by Collins. Collins trying to make something happen. He's still on his feet. He's going to go the other way, but he's given ground. He was at the 15-yard line, and he's going to be tackled all the way back at the five. Trying to make it happen, and sometimes... It just doesn't happen. Right. I'm going to tell you what, I, I, the effort doesn't bother me one bit. I agree. You know, you, you realize it's six minutes left in this game. we got to score twice. Now and the, I know going down the right sideline, he wasn't going to score over no. there. Now the question is, do we see 44 or do we see number nine at quarterback? I have a feeling, like you pointed out and while we were in break, that we're going to see Browning back in the ball game. Let's see if that happens. Well, they were giving him all kinds of agility tests and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure what that's all about to test for, but. Nope, he's still on the sidelines, Coach. I think he's I think he's overheated. He's got stuff on his neck. I don't think, again, we don't want to speculate. We didn't see any hard hits. Not that he hasn't been hit, but he's no, there's no concussion protocol, I don't believe, or anything like that. Well, he's been doing a lot of running. I don't know how many carries he's got tonight, but I would say it's got to be between 10 and 15. Yep. So it will be Gotro on the field. Caden Gotro, the junior quarterback. Five.
5.53 left to go here in this football game. And again, Gotro thrown into a very difficult situation deep in his own territory at the five-yard line. Well, they actually say he's at the seven-yard line is where the ball rests. There's a big hole for Taj Washington. Not, it was big for a minute, but it wasn't big for long as he crosses the 10-yard to the 11-yard line. Picks up five. And check that. I said it was Taj. It was actually Wilson. So we expected to see a lot more running backs uh, as this platoon goes. And guess who's back on the field? Number 44, Browning. But we haven't seen several of the other running backs that we expected to see over the course of this early season. And I'm sure, you know, because all the schools have great training staff. Right. I'm sure, all you know, he was going through all the protocol of what do I have to do, questions I got, ability I got to do. So he's going to drop back and let it fly, and there's nobody down there. It looked like the receiver broke off his route way earlier. There was some miscommunication. And um, three safeties were going for it because they were going to see if they could catch it on the fly. So it brings up a third down and about four. Five oh five left to go in the ball game. Browning calls the play, gets it to the line. Calls to the football, quick pass, and he's just off a little bit. Pass intended for football. It was ta- uh, intended for Chesson, and it was at his feet. And they'll have to punt this one away again. So, again, not putting our punter, Othermon, in good position here. And actually, I, I think it's Ramirez coming out to punt. Number 45, Francisco Ramirez is going to punt. Moore will be set to receive the kick at the East Ascension 46-yard line. Question is, they're going to try to block this. Are they going to bring everybody? Nope, they don't bring too many, but they do try. He does get the ball off. It's a line drive shot, and uh, Moore will let it wisely roll all the way down to the 45-yard line into Rebel territory. Very good effort by Moore right there with a little pressure on him. So, you know, you have this under five minutes. Uh, you have timeouts left, two for East Ascension. Timeouts for West Monroe is not, uh, uh, not, 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 not usable. Let's take a look at what's coming up in the next couple of weeks here on Rev. Take a look once again. Covington at Dutchtown. That'll be on Rev Sports 1 on Friday. John F. Kennedy at Santa Mar will be on Rev Sports 1 on Thursday. And then, of course, in two weeks, Alexandria will be at EA and Opelousas at Santa Mar. So, And the Thursday is because you have a shortage of officials, and I think every, every school or every 5A school, whatever it may be, are going to have – not necessarily an opportunity. You're going to have to uh, play a Thursday night game because yeah. of the shortage of officials. Jupiter and Isom on the stop, and uh, they ran number 22, McNeil, that time, and that's a loss of two. That's interesting. I didn't realize there was a shortage of officials. That was the reason they had to move some things. Yeah. Uh, uh, Coach Oliver called uh, – me this week and said that uh, they asked us if we'd move it. You know, uh, you have Kennedy uh, coming in from New Orleans, and you know he had to call all the powers that may be, and uh, and it worked out to where you know it was fine between Rev and the school board, the school, and everything else. So, and John Kennedy on top of that. 26 carried this time, Christian Ponte, and Ponte will be stopped. He'll lose another couple of yards. It brings up third down. And I didn't—I forgot you were, you were going to—you going to the old stomping ground next week, uh, both of us, right? Yes. Wow. So me and you working together next week at Santa Mar. Yeah, that'll be great. You get to introduce I, I'm, me to I'm gonna all. Have to, I'm going to have to show you around and uh, maybe uh, get you to run. Uh, I'll, I'll throw you some passes, also let you run the deep that route. I'm in, coach. 
Put me in. I've been waiting to be put in for a long time. I'm thinking my arm's going to start hurting right now just thinking <laughs> about that. Just under four minutes now yeah. in this game. And, um, again, we have seen East Ascension get better tonight. And I think that's what Coach Darnell Lee is going to be happy about. Obviously, there's a lot of things that they need to improve upon. But, nonetheless, I think there's some positives that the Spartans are going to take away from this. Oh, West Monroe brought a – Pretty nice crowd. It's a long track. It is a long one. Timeout was called by East Ascension. EA called that timeout. 3.56 left to go in this ball game. Third down and 13. So two straight plays they've lost yardage has the Rebels. The defense has been very good on this drive. Nope, he's going to pull it back. Browning, check that... Um, Federico finds his man, and that's Moore, but Moore is going to be short of the first down by about two yards, so he picks up ten. And looks like Moore does a good job of getting out of bounds. Let's check this out. I was wondering what, where he was headed. And, uh, they said he stayed in. He's definitely still rolling the clock. So it brings up fourth and three. And they're going to punt. So, we, they're uh, again, Collins is going to have to come out and see what he can do with it. He better back up past the 15. He's backing up, backing up, backing up. Now he's at the 10. Again, the last punt that we saw from Lane, he checked it up at the 8. And they may uh, be letting the clock run to get it down there. Maybe they'll call a timeout. Another high, booming kick. Fair catch called by Collins. He lost it a little bit. And then finally was able to haul it in. Not nearly the adventure we've seen from LSU's uh, Punt returners. <laughs> They'll get it. They Practice. better. <laughs> they better. Brings up three minutes left here. Well, I'm not going to say East Ascension doesn't have a chance in this game because you, you seem to always have a chance when you're down just by a couple. But I'm going to tell you, I think everybody on this EA team – and coaching staff, and maybe even the fans, got to say, we probably played good enough to win this game. Yep. Throwing the football on the run, and short, but he goes nowhere, and he finds his receiver, Jason Blackburn. First time we've called Jason's name all night. Jason Blackburn. He just had to dump it off. Tried to get it in the flats, but he was being chased. That was Nick Williams in his face. And you have to say, in the passing game, I would say massive improvements from last week. Yep. And uh, what I would refer to as stupid penalties. Right. Massive improvement from last week. Running game. Looking for somebody. Nice job to step up in the pocket. A lot of quarterbacks, especially young ones, don't do that. Gets out of bounds as he's ridden on out of out of bounds. And he gets close to a first down. And we got a flag on the play. I think it's going to be. Well, they were mixing it up a little bit on the ground there. It'll be interesting to see. Darnell's checking with his quarterback. We'll get the call from our referee. The call is personal foul against West Monroe. It looked it's like number 95 gave him a little shot on the sports. ground. Gotro's back in the ball game. <laughs> I think a smart move by Darnell. Yeah, Browning really got, he got the, if not the wind knocked out of him, he landed on him hard. Just a 10th grader, and I'm going to say, I, I saw some impressive things tonight. And then I'm going to just tell you, that this team they play at West Monroe? Yeah. I mean, they understand what physical football is. And they've had some adversity themselves this week. I mean, their, their regular head coach is not on the field with them. He's an administrative leave, Todd Garvin. The offensive coordinator took over. They have a long bus ride to get here. Dropping back, Gotro. Gotro stepping up in the pocket, looking for somebody to throw to. Across the middle, finds to 
Corey Mitchell. Mitchell, Mitchell gets out of bounds. And the first down with a seven, make that a 11, sorry, 21 yard gain. Couldn't get it out. I, I was trying to add, but your, your adding was a lot better than mine. Gotro, outstanding job of getting underneath all that rush and the whole thing, here's the key. Eyes down the field when he was scrambling around. Nice throw there. Being ready to go in at any time is a tough thing for a backup quarterback. He has done a yeoman's job here. Spins the ball in his hand, looking across the middle, finds his man. He's got some running room. And sidestepped over a defender at the five for the pylon. Touchdown, East Decision. Number eight, Jackson Chesson. Chesson. Goes from step up into year his corner. Steps up into his throw and delivers a strike. And look, all the pajama people. No, ours is Senior Citizen tonight. Senior Citizen night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. Senior Citizen night. Good job right there, Chasson. And all the senior citizens are yawning and clapping. <laughs> they are fired up because it is 27-19. With 1.48 to go, and this kick is up and good. We have a one-score game again, 27 to 20. We will take a break. It is exciting here at East Ascension. Exciting. I'm, I'm, some people had to wake up. <laughs> we will be back after this on the Rev Game of the Week. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment. Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, We Live for This, Glaze, Heating and Air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. All right, and we are back. What an exciting game this has been. Coach said it just a second ago at three minutes. He said, they still got a shot. And look at here. Gotro had to come into the football game, throws two phenomenal passes, one for a touchdown, and it is 27 to 20. Right on the money by Gotro. Onside kick. Bounces off the up man. The ball's loose. Who gets it? It looks like West Monroe fell on it, but I don't want to be under that pile, my friend. It bounced right off the up man's face mask, and it looks like West Monroe will recover. But, man, wow, when that thing popped out, I said, but it, I don't know the second line of guys. It took him a little long to get in there. Right off Good his face kick mask. right there. And I think number 12 is the one that, re that recovered it. All right, so one minute, 41 seconds to go here in the ball game. East Ascension down a score, and the ball into Spartan territory at the 48-yard line. Well, the one thing I'm going to just say, and I may be wrong, they're not going to be a pass here. No. You know, that, that, that I didn't go out on the, the limb on that one. They just got to eat as much clock as they can. It'll be number five, Willis. Willis will try to turn the corner. And, and he picks up a yard. That I don't understand. You got to stay in bounds. Don't run out of bounds. Willis got to stay in bounds if you're Willis. Fall down if you have to. I mean, that's an extra timeout no for uh, East Ascension. Because, team. look, you don't want to get to where you, you're punting. No. Because a block kick might be a touchdown. It took seven seconds off the clock, and the clock has stopped. And you need seven points here. Hopefully we don't have a another uh, sweep into the sidelines here. That time they'll run in the middle. They're not going to even try to run around the end anymore. Big 77 for West Monroe. Ty George, outstanding job. He said, this thing's not over as far as I'm concerned. Timeout Spartans. Timeout Spartans. The game of two on the play. Boy, it looked like um, Frederico almost fell down, had a little trouble getting it to uh, his receiver. I'm, I'm telling you, on that, that oh, no, it looks like that back. veer handoff. Yep. Uh, it could be a little, because the same thing happened with East Ascension down on the goal line. Right. You know, you're trying to hand that ball so quick to that up back. And then when he's 
up on the line of scrimmage, you know, anything could happen right there. I'd rather him re rotate, I mean, uh, reverse out and hand to that tailback, uh, let all those big boys block and let's see, put number five back there, see what he could do. Well, big Washington. Third and eight, the Rebels. Third and eight, Federico will go under center this time. Eye formation with the ball at the 47. He's going to roll out, looking for somebody to throw to, being chased. He's got a hand on him, and he's sacked, but he gets the ball away. He does not get sacked. He See, gets the ball no, away. Nobody in the stadium knows the new rule. Right. Nobody in the stadium knows the new rule. It was Nathan Allen, number 50, who chases him down from behind. So when you get out of the tackle box between the two offensive tackles and you throw the pass. But it didn't go to the line of scrimmage. It's it got to go intentional grounding. It's got to go. And look, I'm going to just tell you, when he threw it, I believe it went past the line of scrimmage. Yep. So it will be loss of down, and it will be fourth down. They will lose seven yards on the play. Eh, maybe not, maybe five, six yards on the play. I don't know. Can we see that one again, Nolan? The ball's at the 40, what, 48? The intentional grounding. That'll bring up fourth down for the Rebels. And approximately 20 yards to go, 22. That's pretty close to the 48, but whatever. So they will have to punt, and there is a lot of time left on this clock. 1.23 to go. So let's watch it one more time. Rolling out. Great job by our camera guys, and it only gets to the 49-yard line. I got to hand it to our camera guys. Way to go, guys. We got the best camera team. We got the best crew in the world. Another high, high punt. I wish I had a hang time calculator on that Catch one. Catch the ball. It will roll all the way down to the 10, 0, 9, 8, 7 yard line. Again, the exact same spot. And man, I, the, the MVP of this game might be their punter, Patrick Lane. Daniel Lane, excuse me. Wow. You gotta catch that one, coach. You gotta catch that one. Yep, freak so. Can't have the clock running, can't be losing yardage. But it's all about learning to get better next week. Gotro's going back in the game. It is not going to be Browning. But Gotro, you know, two quick strikes down the field and a personal foul call helped us on the last drive. 108 to go. 27-20. And this is the last stand for the East Ascension Spartans. Gotro calls for the football, drops back, no pressure, delivers across the middle to the 10. He'll get out of bounds. Will go, Will Chesson. Chesson will get out of bounds at the 27 yard line. It'll be a first down. Chesson's making a few plays. Plenty of time to throw the football. Good job, good job right there. Uh, only a three man rush, and you double team that nose guard right there. Also, a good job by the quarterback and not forcing that ball down the field. You know, you picked up 15 or 20 yards right there. Calls for the football again, once again in the flats. And he will stay in bounds. He will not get out of bounds as Ja'Cory Mitchell, so he'll have to go quick. Ja'Cory Mitchell. Timeout is called. Down to the 30 yard line, Spartans timeout. And Spartans call a timeout. We'll take a break real quick as well with 51 seconds to go. 27 to 20 back right, after this on the Rev Game of the Week. Rebels leading. The athletic training staff of East Ascension High School would like to thank Ascension Equipment, Our Lady of the Lake Health, Piku Builder Supplies, Ross Downing Buick GMC, Walk-Ons, we live for this. Glaze, heating and air, SKR Construction, Austin Fire Systems, for their support of our EA Sports Medicine Program. Great pass, great catch, unfortunate that he got, he, got, he, was, he couldn't get out of bounds. Uh, you got two safeties deep. And again, you have the same thing that West Monroe scored on. If you run those four verticals, 
Quick pass, and that's interference. No question about it. Got there early. Number seven. That's more. And that'll be a pass interference. So you have that. If you have those three receivers to the side, they took one and brought him in the flat. But if you bring them all down the field, and that third inside, you let him run that skinny post like you talked about, and you can get this thing on this hash mark right here on a deep throw. No timeouts for the Spartans. And it's first and 10 from their own 45-yard line. Clock stopped at 48 seconds. Big penalty moves them down the field. Can't take a lot of chances across the middle, though. Dropping back, and the whistle will blow. False start. All right, that's unfortunate for the, for the Spartans there. Backs them up five. At this point, five yards probably doesn't matter that much. No, the, uh, the, the time is a critical factor right now. Uh, because of the two safeties deep, you're possibly not going to be able to get a big play in. They put some more unless time back on the clock. Sorry to interrupt you, but they just. Unless you could get by one of these outside defenders. So it wasn't 46. They put six seconds, five seconds back on the clock, 51 seconds. They rushed him this time. Stepped up in the pocket, throws it to Mitchell, and Mitchell can't hang on. It was a little low. It was right at the down marker. Falls incomplete. Second and 15. Brings up second and 15. Clock stops, though, on the, inc on the incompletion. Again, both of these quarterbacks do a good job of stepping in up into the pocket. I mean, you see guys do that all the time where they, where they don't. They step up and they fall back, and you can't throw the ball and off I'm, your I'm back. I'm telling foot. you, that is hard to teach. I bet. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard. You know, why do you want to step closer to the <laughs> war zone? Here? Right, right. Very good job there by uh, Coach Gaspar. Oh, he dropped the snap. He picked it up. Still on his feet. And he's going to get dropped the ball now, and it's picked up by West Monroe. West Monroe's number 46 is taking it to the house. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's unfortunate. Number 46. Oh, that is a tough play to finish it off with. As Cameron Smiley, check that, Colin Watkins, a senior linebacker, picks up the snap, or not the snap, but the fumble and brings it to the house. Well, tough way for this one to possibly end. I'm still going to go with the possibly. Stranger but things have happened, Coach. Number 17, Hunter Fox, in for the extra point. Hunter the Fox level. will do the honors. He's uh, only had one miss tonight, and it was blocked. This was up and good. Kick is up, kick is good. You see the kids rush the uh, extra point? That tells me as a head coach, the boys ain't good. East 20. That's a big point right there. The boys, I mean, the, 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 I said the players have not quit. They got two of them chasing, one of the nine, number nine, the quarterback. They That's a great point, quit. though. That's a great point. And I'm going to just tell you, you uh, Coach uh, Lee's got something to work with. Seems like his coaching staff is uh, very sound. And, uh, you know, everybody always needs to work on the kicking game. Right. Um, 34 to 20 with 35 seconds to go here. Matthew Collins is on the right side of the field. Looks like Ja'Cory Mitchell also out there to receive the kick. I can't quite get the number. Fox will put his foot into it. Squibber. It will be taken at the 25-yard line. This is Wilson. Crosses the 30 to the 31. So 31 seconds to go here in the ball game, and the ball will be at the Spartan 31-yard line. 
A lot of football left. It's only week two. I know they're, they, they could possibly go to 0 and 2, but there's a lot of football left. Well, you know, you look at East Ascension last year, they were 6 and 6. And basically, it's the same schedule. They were 1 and 1 after week two with an overtime victory over West Monroe. Uh, so I just see a different team here. I, yep, I'm with you. I, I, I see a better team. And it could even get better. Gotro will hand off to Wilson, and Wilson's going straight up the middle, and that's pretty much going to do it. A little chippy out there between a couple of linemen. Hayden Stewart mixing it up with a couple of the Spartans. 16 seconds. I don't think they're going to run another play, and that's going to do it. Ten seconds in the final ticks of the game. Everybody will shake hands. West Monroe makes the long trip. With some adversity at hand, they get the victory, 34-20 to over East Ascension. The Spartans played an incredible football game. Unfortunately, they had some miscues and lost two fumbles tonight. But nonetheless, Coach, they got something to work with, as you've been saying. And uh, something to work with in a positive direction. You know, when we talked about the keys to victory uh, for the offensive line for East Ascension to win a line of scrimmage, I think uh, you go to the running back. Uh, number five, and you ask him, how did, how did we do on that line of scrimmage task? Yep. And he says, Coach, you know, I'm sure he ran for over 100 yards. Yeah, tonight. no doubt, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> and uh, swarm to the ball and wrap up. Between the tackles, East Ascension, I felt like they, they dominated. And then uh, win the line of scrimmage, I think it was a victory for East Ascension. But – that's not in the uh, score sheet as far as That's winning right. the game. That's right. And, um, you know, the, the whole thing is they got to get together, improve the state, and get better exactly like they did this week. And if they do that, they got a pretty good shot at winning next week against Destrehan, a very good football team. Well, we will see you guys on Thursday night as we will have the Santa Ma John F. Kennedy game Thursday night at 7 o'clock. We go on at 645 on Rev Sports 1. Of course, Dutchtown will be on Rev Sports 1 on Friday. And we can't thank everybody enough. We want to thank Jake Wazan. Um, uh, of course, Nolan Wagesback, our director. And um, Rhett Misha for, I uh, probably didn't pronounce his name quite right, but I appreciate all the work that these guys did. Fine job on our camera and our director. So, again, thank you, everybody. Coach Swacker, for myself, Jimmy Frederick. Good night, everybody. The final score. East Ascension falls to the Rebels of West Monroe, 34-20. to Again, have a great night, everybody, and a wonderful weekend. We'll see you next week on Thursday, Santa Ma versus John F. Kennedy on the Rev Game of the Week.